Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Gorilla Blood Radio. My name is Daniel Korea, and I'm hailing from the Metroplex in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. And with me is Scott NDX out in New York City. What's up, Scott? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I finally figured out they call this area the Metroplex, so it's kind of nice to have a, a name. You make it sound bigger than it really is. It's like all the crap between Dallas and Fort Worth they kind of call the Metroplex area. Yeah, it's useless. Thanks. Yeah, no, useless. Yeah. Useless. <laughs> You're welcome to that, yeah. by the way. It's going to be a nonstop gag <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Uh, Come on, dude, you're from Useless Texas. Oh, Come on. Geez. Speaking of gags, did you happen to see uh, what uh, Harry the Boobs uh, posted uh, up as a, uh, a little thing on an Instagram message to you? Uh, you mean the black rainbow of hate, my friend, the black wall of hate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I got this. I was like, oh, jeez. Yeah, I was like... Yeah, he might laugh at that, but it looks kind of nothing like him, but whatever. <laughs> it makes sense, I guess, the Black Rainbow Hate. Yeah, it's, um... Interesting. That looked more like a goth rainbow of hate. <laughs> I've never been very gothy. No, but still, it was funny. It's funny for what it was. I mean, I never, I never really went through that stage. Yeah. It's nah. Everybody gets a little angsty, but never. I have never been goth or anything like that. I listened to punk rock when I was in, like, high school a little bit, so. I listen to Jake Counts. Sure. <laughs> I think I've... Ska. I like Ska better than regular punk. Yeah. Brian would agree with you some on, to some point of that. I know, uh... I Brian, saw him live once. Yeah, Brian McClaw is into, is into Ska, so... His sister actually was in a Ska band, so... I could have been in one if I stayed with the trumpet. Nice. The trombone. Nice. I used to play the trombone in elementary school. Nice. And I wasn't half bad at it, too. Yeah, Brian's uh, Brian's sister, Angela, is in a, a band called Jokes for Feelings, and I believe she played the trumpet. Yeah. So. I kind of regret giving that up now. Yeah. Like, I got into junior high, I'm like, I joined the band, I'm like, hey, you know what, I don't feel like doing this. Yeah. And that was the end of that. I was yeah. like, oh, I kind of regret this now. See, I I was never Twenty years later. Yeah, I was never a big music guy. Like I I my aunt tried to teach me how to play piano and I gave that up after about a week because I, I just me and my aunt don't get along very much and she's she's a former school teacher herself and she's very strict when she's teaching her music. Uh, so I was like, no thanks, I'm good. And then on top of that, I tried picking up a guitar in uh, college and didn't really do much with that either. And you couldn't get any girls, could you? No, I just I couldn't multitask. It's hard to like read sheet music and play, and then eventually like want to sing the song over the top of it. I can't multitask very well. Dude, you couldn't even use a tablet to look at the computer screen and draw. Yeah, I know. I really don't like t- using tablets. I'd rather draw draw directly onto the tablet and see it right appear right behind it. Sure, that only costs a couple of thousand dollars. Well, now there, I mean, there's applications that appear on your phone and on actual tablets, but they're nowhere near. I, I won't lie, I kind of want to get an Apple uh, iPad for Procreate. Nice. Seeing what some people do with that on Instagram, I'm like, I can do shit like that. Yeah. Not that good, but. I mean, I would love to sit there on the bus just fucking doodling away. Yeah, no, that would be totally fun. And, and you know what? Speaking of doodling, it just made me think of um, lately. You 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 remember the old uh, You Don't Know Jack game? No. You don't remember the You Don't Know Jack trivia games? No. Wow. Okay. You Don't Know Jack was like an irreverent trivia game where basically it was like ask you trivia questions – and that were like weirdly worded on purpose, and then they you had to answer like with stupid answers or whatnot. And it was like tried to be done like a like a TV game show kind of thing. Well, the people who made that um, have now come out with extra games called Jackbox Party Pack. So they make like more different types of games, and they have a few of them out there now that are freaking hilarious that I think you would love. Two of which have to do with drawing. Uh, one is called Drawful, where basically they give you something to draw. You draw it on your phone, and then you're playing with a group of people on the internet. And from there, they have to guess 
based on random titles, like what you actually drew. So there, there, there's one, and another one is called T K O T E E, as in T-shirt. So you and all your opponents write random slogans, and also draw any random ass picture. And then you piece them together from all the different drawings and all the different slogans. You get, like, randomly chosen, like, three or four you can choose from to piece them together to make a t-shirt with a slogan on it. And then the, everybody kind of votes as to what's the best one. Dude, it's fucking hilarious what people come up with. Huh. Yeah, so. And then there's other ones that are on there, like, there's a game called Fibbage where you basically, random question, you have to... Uh, write in the most convincing lie and try to get people to choose your lie as the right thinking it's the right answer. So there's there's some there's some good ones. I think the best one of all though is called Trivia Murder Party, and it's basically a trivia game mixed with the idea that you were kidnapped by a psychopath and he's gonna kill you. So it's like Hangman, kind of. But it would be like a random trivia question. If you get it wrong, then you do a little mini game. And during the mini game, it'll be sometimes it'll say, okay, if there's four or five of you, 30 seconds on the clock, how many math problems can you answer? Go. Or it'll be like, okay, three of you got it wrong. Everybody else gets to put a poison pill in a random cup. And you're playing Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Which cup is not going to kill you? <laughs> It's a fun little game, man. I like that. So uh, I'm looking at Drawful. They want ten bucks for it. Yeah, some of those games. Well, if you buy them in the party pack, I think you can get like usually the party packs have four or five games in the bunch, and you can get them for like fifteen bucks. How would I even play this on? I don't have an Xbox One. I don't have a PS4. I don't have Steam. I don't have uh, Amazon Fire TV. I don't have Apple TV. I don't use the Mac App Store. Uh, I'm not humble. Or, uh, I'm definitely not humble. Uh, and I don't use Bundle Stars. Oh, well. Well, I guess you're not playing that game anytime soon. Nope. Bummer. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't pay for apps. Yeah, I want them to put something like that on the actual, like, uh, the OS, Google OS, or whatever the heck, uh, the Play Store. That would be cool if they actually put it on there. Where you can just play. I'll just take a decent drawing app, you know. But my phone, I don't have, like my phone is tiny as shit and eats battery life like no tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of drawing, you've been drawing a lot more uh, on your Instagram. I have seen over at Scott NDX on Instagram. Uh, what you? It looks like you're you're drawing a comic. Well, okay. So I've had to be ta I've had to take over uh, art duties at work lately. And uh, I figured the best way to be able to do my job and still enjoy doing it, being in the classroom again, was let's just do a fucking comic. Nice. Yeah. So uh, the idea is the kids have to write something, and if they're doing something, I should probably do it too, because they only seem more motivated when, you know, the teacher gets involved. Oh, yeah. No, no doubt. I, I've seen that firsthand, and even in the high school level. Yeah. So, like, if you're asking... Um, you know, in the middle of creating with them. Uh, yeah, so they, they kind of want to do more work themselves. Although they do get occasionally distracted by getting up and coming over like, oh, no, I'm like, go sit down. <laughs> they want to see what you're doing. Yeah. Nice. No. I'm like, can we see it? I'm like, you'll see it when I'm done. When will you be done? I have no idea. Oh, man. Still haven't finished a comic book. I started for a lesson like this back in 2014. Right on. Cool. I got eight pages of that. Hey, shoot. Not really, because I don't know how to write. I suck at writing. If someone wrote for me, I'd probably have a little better luck. Plus, it doesn't help that I decided to draw this comic in pure fucking Crayola marker. <laughs> and it's only going to take, you know, uh, if I fuck up, <laughs> it's going to be in the comic. Yeah. Hey. I don't have the chance of erasing anything. Yeah, well, hey, at least you're doing something. You're still flexing your creative muscles there. And, uh, again, yeah, I got six pages done, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and seven. What happened to six? Yeah, I completely forgot about that. 
<laughs> so and, when I started writing the story, I only wrote uh, two, like you know, two sides of a white piece of paper. You know, so I when I separated everything out to uh, pages, like oh, okay, that's six pages. I drew the first five, finished five on Monday. I'm like, oh, I need to write more story. So then I go into writing more story, and then I forgot that I still had a page worth of comic to draw from the original portion of the story that I wrote. So you yeah, continued on. I, the- drawing, I finished page seven before I even thought of page six. Mm-hmm. I started page six today, but I I only got about halfway done. Right on, right on. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not going to ask what the story's about? Sure. What's the story about? You tell me. What have you read so far? Uh, I've just seen the pictures. I haven't actually read through them. I've been starring them as I see them, but so in hopes to go back later and read them. I'm, yeah, I'm, that's not going to happen at this point. Well, I want to read it as a whole, but I will go back and read you them. You can't read it as a whole, because I may never finish it. <laughs> <laughs> then I may never read it. That's my history with comics, damn it. It's not something I'm proud of. But, uh, yeah, apparently I can get like three pages in and then I'm fucked. Right on. Right on, man. Well, hey, guess what? I got a surprise for you. Yeah? Uh, I'm going to do a countdown for you. Seven. 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 Brian's here. Oh. Hey, Scotty. Oh, no. oh, I really hate that name. I'm sorry, I just you. missed you so much. And st- dude, as soon as he said that, he covered his mouth and went, "Oh shit." <laughs> so I'm sorry, much. I missed you. How you doing? Do me a favor, kick him out of his chair. I'm not in the chair. He's in the in the seat next to me on the couch. I'll like. God damn it. I'll poison his food or something. Can't I get a mulligan? I got you a pop. Because I love you. <laughs> this is <been> very awkward. <laughs> that was my plan. Yeah, Brian literally just walked in the door from work. He worked, what, what, 12 hours plus 13 hours today? Uh, about 16. What time did you start? 5 o'clock in the morning. Holy crap. They called you, me in oh early. Oh, God. Jeez Louise. I, I knew you were going to start at 6. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. they called me in early. Holy shit. And I got to be there tomorrow at 7, and it's like 10.30. What the fuck do you do? I deliver money. He drives armor trucks. <laughs> Who the fuck would trust you with money? That's what I've been saying for the last five months, but apparently someone does. He's already been shot at multiple times, plus he also count, uh, showed me and counted the number of bullets that uh, have not penetrated the windows of his truck. That made me feel better and scared me at the same time, because that's the only truck that has any bullet holes that I have seen yet. I've only been here a week, so... Yeah, there's that going for me. I'm you fucked. about the fingers. <laughs> they want to take the claw as a trophy. Ooh. I mean, it's a cool trophy. I would have it on my shelf. You just want me on your shelf, Scott. No, I just need part of that. I just want the claw. Like a like a fucked up monkey's paw, you know? You know <laughs> wishes. Well, I mean, dude, I mean, you, you're a Walking Dead fan. It would basically be like uh, the governor's little collection in the fish tank. I would actually have it next to my replica of the fish tanks. <laughs> Do you actually have a replica of the fish tanks? Yeah, a DVD set. Yes, yeah, so I have uh, the season three box set that came with the fish tanks. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. That is so... <laughs> like, I'm going against myself right now, but that's kind of cool. He's not a big Walking Dead person. I I think uh, Negan is awesome. Uh, Negan is amazing. My favorite character by far. And I only know, yeah, like, half the characters. I only watched the first episode of the most recent season. I have actually missed the last seven episodes. That's okay. The first one's the only thing I saw. He just wanted to see people die. No, I wanted to see Negan because he's... A character and a couple other things that I watch. and He, I, he watches, uh, what was the one? Supernatural. Yeah, he, the Supernatural, Negan, the actor who plays him, is was the dad. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm not. He was a badass in both shows. What a little, a little, yeah, a little, a little more in Walking Dead. Well, he, he killed things all the time. I was going to say, wasn't he, like, isn't there, like, a, a picture floating around of him, like, when he was a younger man, quote-unquote, playing baseball in yeah. Supernatural? yeah. How ironic. No, yeah, that's, yeah. 
one of the guys from Supernatural said, hey, Dad, I found this picture of you, like, right after that happened. And he goes, what happened to you after that? And the the character that played Negan actually responded on Twitter saying, not now, son, not now. I thought it was funny. Yeah, just seeing him in, like, interviews and shit, like, you could tell he, this is something he wanted to do. He oh. was a fan. Oh, there's a, there's a story going around the way that he got the part. They actually called him up and asked him, I guess they kind of described a little bit of the part, and uh, I guess for like five minutes he kept saying, it's Negan, isn't it? It's Negan, isn't it? I want to be Negan. I want to be Negan. And they gave it to him. Yeah, basic, basically. I don't blame him. He's fucking fantastic as an actor, and he fits the role perfectly, and he doesn't curse every three seconds like he did in the comic book. Which makes it more palatable. Yes, very much so. So... Man, dude. Yeah, no, it's just it's just funny. Uh, I don't know. I, Brian just never got into it. I've been watching basically. It's not terrible. I just, it's not. I've got so many other shows that I, I'd watch that's kind of priority over that. Although with Girl Meets World ending, I might have a slot open soon. I said slot. I said slot. He just I, looked at you funny, didn't he? Yes, he did. I, I, just, I just, like, facepalmed because he <laughs> actually admitted, like, that is like must see TV for him. Girl Meets World is must see TV for you. I, you watch it too. Shut up. I don't mind the show. It's not like I go out of my way to freaking watch it every freaking week. Oh yeah, no, I have to watch it. That's that's uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a couple episodes back, so like I'm a little freaking out. I like Boy Meets Did World. Did Vader show up in this one? No, Vader has not showed up. I yet. wish. I I would love to see a new episode where they like Vader's like an old wrestler and they have to help him like. Not, I don't know, kill himself or something? I don't know. Jace Louise. That yeah, took- that's great. It's great <laughs> to hear after finding out that he's dying in two years, probably. No. Not with the DDP. DDP, DDP is that. helping him at least span that, like, four or five more years. Here's hoping. He's got, like, six left. Well, you mentioned Vader. Let's. Should he go in the Hall of Fame this year? Oh, then? hell yes. He should have gone through the Hall of Fame three years ago. What the fuck? I think he thought last year, the year before last, yeah, last year, he when he was the person introducing Sting. I think he thought he was getting in that year. <laughs> <laughs> that makes I don't sense. Know, he's not in yet. Yeah. Uh, well, right now we know so far. Right now, officially, Kurt Angle is the only one that has been named to be in the WWE Hall of Fame this year. And rumors. Like, it's me. It's me. It's DDP. Yeah. Rumors. So, so far, DDP is going to be on that list. Um, other rumors I keep hearing are William Regal. I keep hearing Christian's name floating around, and most what r- fucking Henry should go in. Yeah, uh, maybe. I, I mean, I can see that. The, uh, what about on, what uh, about Kane? Uh, when, where is uh? When did they what, uh, they were at in Texas, right? Uh, me. Well, yeah, yeah it was last, last year. year. Was in yeah Dallas. Oh, that's when they should have put him in. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. The one name that just came out just in the last forty-eight hours since Kurt Angle was announced. Or so, a little bit more than forty-eight hours. Um, Beth Phoenix. Uh, I was hoping the climb was on a return to the ring. I yeah, I would hope so too. That's that's what I wanted to see. I'm sorry, as much as I love Beth Phoenix, I don't think she had a career worthy of the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how they're gonna play that. I mean, especially like with Mickey James now just coming back. Uh, Mickey James deserves it more than Gita. I just, I agree. But Mickey James is active. Now she is. And she should be active for two years at least. What about Victoria? That's another one I think should be in there. She did great when yeah, she was in WWE. Super Rhea, I think, would be definitely much more um, worthy than Beth Phoenix. Not that I don't like Beth Phoenix. She was pretty good. Oh, gosh. She was like the reason to watch when I was wrestling at that time. Yeah, because she was the best thing going for a while. Do you, you know what? Like it, was, it was easy to just sit there and watch the Glamazon beat up everyone. Yeah. Well, Especially the Bellas. Good doing it, so. yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I think it would be kind of funny. Um, I know part of me, I know I know we've said this in the past when it comes to guys like Coco Beware. Uh-oh. Um, but you I, need your choppers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to do it. We need to have a jobber's wing, no doubt. We need to have a jobber's wing. But like, all of a sudden, be a 
jobbers queen, but we can pay respect to jobbers. Yeah. Like, if someone said, we're inducting Barry Horowitz to the Hall of Fame, I'd probably be the first one to pat myself on the back. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Or the the Brooklyn Brawler or whoever. I mean, that. <laughs> Already. Yeah, no, I'm I'm shocked as well. But what I was thinking is, if Coco Beware's in there, and personally, I I don't have anything really against Coco Beware. Um, he, he was an average, in my opinion, av- okay. average wrestler, entertaining as hell. Everybody m- m- remembers Frankie. Um, but everyone remembers Coco Beware. Yeah, they do remember him. But it's not like you're sitting there going, "Who the fuck is Coco Beware?" Exactly. Nah, this guy's teamed with several different people that we all know. Okay. <laughs> And he had a hell of a singles career. Yeah. He might not have won titles, but he was a prominent character throughout the 80s. So, roll with me here. What, like, mid-card type guys do you think that were, like, unappreciated but were good enough that possibly could be in the hall? That weren't maybe not... T.L. Hopper. Who? T.L. Hopper. Really? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> what a day. I'm like, what the hell is... <laughs> Jay's Louise. No, because what yeah, I, I wouldn't have put Duke Rossi. Yeah, there. no, because what what I was thinking. I mean, somebody somebody like an Al Snow, or somebody like uh, uh, a Canyon. Ooh, so somebody like a Maven. No, not Maven. Maybe not. Maven. Okay, Jobbers guy. I would I would say Raven, <laughs> not Maven. Tommy Dreamer. I mean, some of those guys. I'm surprised Dreamer isn't in. Well, he's still kind of competing against them in some senses. Yeah. So, any yeah, idea? but they still have them on, like, anything. Once in a while, yeah. <laughs> the glorious bombs. I think he's one of those guys that has um, carte blanche to kind of do whatever he wants outside of the business. But if he needs him, he'll be like, he'll be there. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, like, what other guys can you think of that were kind of like in that middle ground, like a Coco Beware? Like... Uh, I mean, Tito Santana went in not too long ago. Do we think yeah. Martel finally gets in here soon enough? Uh, Re- what, did did uh, Brian Pillman go in? I don't think so. That would be a good yeah, one. I think yeah, Brian I can Pillman see. That. Well, he we was st- totally underrated. Well, we still haven't even seen the Bulldogs go in. Mm. That's a lot of animosity in the family. Yeah, well, because of Dave, uh, Davey Boy Dynamite taking the... Dynamite Kid's an asshole. Oh. Dynamite Kid was also the better wrestler of the two, but... Fuck that! No, I, I, people don't give Davey Boy enough credit. You know, Public Stadium '92. We're gonna see what that out there. The screw. What about Owen? Owen needs to. Owen honestly yeah, should have been if, there if years they ago. They finally got past that issue with the wife. If they can start using footage of him like they have, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully this eventually means that he will go to the Hall of Fame. Because if anyone really, do, probably one of the Chris Grant. I guess I want to say greatest and best at the same time. <laughs> so we're going to keep that. One of the best wrestlers of all times that never won a world title. Yeah. And that's on purpose. That was his choice. Yeah. It, I mean, I think they offered him more than once. He's like, yeah, eh, no, I don't need it. Yeah. He honestly, I mean, it was I, more like give it to someone else who needs it. I don't need it. I think if you if if he wouldn't have had that fluke accident, I think Owen would have gone down as one of the best wrestlers of all time. Oh, no doubt. I, I think he still can. I still think he's better than Brett. I'll give you that. I, I agree. I, I think they're they're pretty neck and neck. I gotta say they're pretty neck and neck. Brett was a little better on the mic I, though. You know why Owen was better than Brett? Because Owen was able to work a character on like Brett. Owen was mm, able to work a mic on like Brett. Mm. Okay, Brett was the same fucking guy his whole career. But Owen Hart was blue blazer, stupid guy to eat on fucking pants in the checker stripes. Okay. Yeah. He was, you know, he was also... He went from being, you know, the guy in Bret Hart's shadow to the one who fucking beat him to open up WrestleMania 10 mm-hmm. and have one of the biggest steel cage matches ever at SummerSlam 94. Yeah, I... I so fuck I, Owen Hart is better than Bret Hart. I think you just sold me. I mm-hmm. think I, Seriously, I think you just sold me on that. Because I've been a Bret Hart fan for my whole life, basically. I think I have it. No, I know, but you just sold me on on that with that with the I I totally didn't think about all the different characters that Owen has played compared to Brett's solo thing. Even though Brett did better in the singles career, and whatnot, tag divisions, everything like that. Honestly, Brett wanted it more. Hmm. Owen's like, I'm just gonna get paid and have fun. Yeah, and Bre- honestly, Brett had more of the look that they were looking for. Owen was a little more skinny. They weren't looking for that at the time. 
Yeah, he wasn't as built. Right now, if Owen put the effort into it, yep. because I think it's, it's funny. Because if any of you read uh, uh, Blood and Sweat Socks, Foley, or no, which one was? I think it was Have a Nice Day was his first book. Yeah, Have a Nice yeah. Day was the first book. He was in the middle of writing it when Owen died. Yeah. Okay. So one chapter is dedicated to Owen Hart. He just talks about him. And one thing he talks about is how much of a family man he was, and he figured that if he was going to be world champion, it would take him away from his family more. Wow. Plus, he was also a joker. Yeah, he was a. There was a yes. Foley tells a story of how he's teaming with the uh, with Bulldog and Owen when they're all heels together, you know. And Bulldog is laughing his ass off in the middle on the outside of the ring, and you know Foley couldn't figure out why until Bulldog pointed it out. Owen is in the headlock and he's checking his watch. <laughs> like I don't get paid by the hour, folks. <laughs> but like, like, so like, just like the idea of. And he did it just to make Bulldog laugh. Yeah, there's certain people in the ring that that can't hold their uh, hold their emotions very well. And Bulldog apparently was one of them. I hear Roman Reigns is another one who laughs a lot in the ring because <laughs> people. Make... <laughs> it doesn't help when Kevin Owens is kind of just fucking with him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And Roman Reigns trying to keep a straight face and he can't. Yeah, and you know what? I just was thinking of. Uh, let's let us not forget the uh, token white guy in the Nation of Domination. For Owen Hart. Wow. Wow. And yet he made it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then he Owen w- was a consummate professional in and out of the ring to me. I mean, if you're going to have fun at a house show, it's a fucking house show. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, that's why I love going to indie shows, because you get stupid shit like that a lot of times. Yeah. Dude, yeah. But Owen was... The best of the Hart family. Yeah. That's it. And it's simple. Now, another half of uh, Owen Hart there would be uh, the the man I I enjoyed watching when he was in WWE, but not many people did. That would be J E double F J A double R E double D. Ha ha. Jeff Jarrett. Um. Sorry, I gotta say it like that because you just can't do it not any other way. First of all, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. J E double F, J A double R E double T. Yeah. So. As you can tell, I'm a fan as well. Yeah, but I don't think he was world heavyweight champion material. Not until he got to TNA and you started seeing a more vicious side. You see, him, him and TNA, though, was him trying to protect the company. Yeah. And I think that worked in the end. And I didn't mind him as TNA World Heavyweight Champion. <clears throat> I didn't really any skin in the game when it came to TNA. Yeah. I did not buy him in WCW or WWF as a world champion. I see title, holy shit, man. Him and fucking Razor Ramon had some great matches. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I think Jarrett should go into the Hall of Fame, but he won't anytime soon, as long as he's oh, affiliated sorry. with Impact. Not even just that, you know... Vince McMahon has a fucking hate boner for him like no tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that is true. He doesn't really care for the Jarrett at all. Oh, Which Jarrett kind of went out guns a-blazing. You know, Jeff Jarrett was a pretty damn talented wrestler, mm-hmm. and I think he's helped change pro wrestling a little bit by at least having some competition for Vince McMahon in some fashion. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think deep down there probably is some respect there from Vince to, to Jeff. But uh, as long as he's still... You know, there's definitely animosity, especially when he was, like, the first guy brought up when he's like, I bought WCW. You think Jeff Jarrett's getting a job? He's not. <laughs> Damn, he's angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like, that was, still, like, 2001, and I knew back then, like, oh, man. Yeah. See, I liked him. I liked Jarrett back in WCW. I was not fond of him. So much. I didn't, say I didn't like him. Plus, you know who doesn't like the name Slap Nuts? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. You know it's funny. I, go ahead. I just didn't buy him as world champ. Yeah. You know it's funny. I I found an action Jeff Jarrett action figure from WWE. Um, it was when he was paired up with Owen, and he has his guitar and he's got his T-shirt on and his T-shirt says Slap Nuts on it, but the guitar instead of saying "Don't piss me off." It said, don't make me mad. Wow. I'm like, wow. So they can say slap nuts, but they say don't, can't say don't piss me off. <laughs> I kind of miss that little edginess of wrestling mm-hmm. in the mainstream. Yeah. That attitude era? Just like to be able to just be able to say, 
piss like on a regular basis. Yeah, well, you're starting to see it a little bit more. Ass. You uh, mean like Maddie calling a uh, bitch? Uh, Nikki a bitch like several times in one segment. Yeah, that happens. I mean, in although imp- I think the biggest insult is my cat has more personality than you. <laughs> Yeah, no. Impact Impact still does it every now and again. Um, you, you, yeah, but Impact's kind of you know. It, it's floundering right now. I'll give you that. It's floundering. It's, it's been floundering. I'm just like Impact's always tried to push the boundaries, but they've never pushed it enough. Yeah. You know, they've kind of been like, oh, we're edgier than WWE. Slightly. Kind of. We're like we're a foot closer to the edge of the cliff where ECW was hanging off it. Yeah. It's like if you want to go that far. Pull a fucking ECW. Yeah. Okay? They could. Don't worry about, you know, all the money you're going to make from, you know, the non-existent uh, salespeople and shit or whatever, commercials and shit like that. Yeah. You know, try to get the fan base. You know, the fan base wants something that's not WWE like. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely see what happens with them because, yeah, no, coming up uh, next week is their uh, Genesis show. And they're supposed to have a... um. You, I mean, everybody's been talking about how WWE women's division is taking it to the next level in cage matches and stuff like that. Impact has been doing that for a while now and letting the women get into the cage, and now they're having... Oh, no doubt the knockouts were, you know, doing things that, you know, Vince and company weren't doing for a while, so it's not like it's truly revolutionary. Yeah. Just revolutionary on the biggest scale. Yeah, well, ne- this coming up week, uh, we just had an episode. Let's be honest, uh, Japan and Shimmer, like, I fucking ranked these ones. Oh, yeah, ago. absolutely. Hands down. Uh, no, that's, uh, uh, what was that, Toyota Masami or some shit like that? Oh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Yeah, let me just say this. Female Japanese barbed wire death matches. Yeah. It's the only ones, too. Yeah, I've seen some death matches with, in the past mm-hmm. with, um... Lufisto and Mickey Knuckles and some of the other ones from I, um, from uh, I, I, ICW um, Mid South, I think that was what it was. Um, but yeah, there was there was some pretty pretty bad <laughs> bloody death matches there too. Um, Are you talking about CZW? No, not CZW. Okay. There's another one. Yeah, that's pretty bloody. Too. Yeah, those are too. But um, but no, uh, they're supposed to be doing a. Uh, uh, IWA. Oh no, I what did I say? ICW. Yeah, IWA Mid South. Yes, thank you. Oh, God, can we not mention IWA Mid-South? Yeah, okay, I'll pass, but no, next week on uh, on Genesis, they're supposed to, for the women's title, um, Jade is challenging Rosemary, and they're going to let them have a Monsters Ball match. That doesn't mean too much, though, because Monsters Ball match is just a hardcore match. I know, but for the women, that's something that just doesn't happen. No, it doesn't happen enough. Yeah, so, I mean, at least not on television. So, but, I mean, WWE did a nice pussified version of it between Carmella and Nikki Bella. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we'll see if these two can pull it off next week. I like the match, but calling it a street fight between the two of them was just like, oh, here's a kendo stick match. Yeah, I'm just going like, to... There was no chairs, there was no violence, there was no hooking in a submission and the ropes and just holding it there for an hour and a half until someone quit. Mm-hmm. There. Let me just tell you, that was one of the... Uh, Regal and Punk had a uh, 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 no DQ match, and Regal no, I think Punk hooked Regal into a submission in the ropes. Just held him. Why don't people do that more often? Yeah, it's a no DQ match. Hey, why not? Like, I mean, seriously. I can't t- go ahead, reach the ropes. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna choke you out with the ropes. What are you gonna do about it, bitch? Yeah, to Jerry throwing on the uh, the little tarantula thing on the ropes and just not letting go. And just leave it there until someone's. Like he yeah, well, hell shit. Tajiri hanging upside down will have to let go because of all the blood rushing to his head soon enough. <laughs> yeah, let's see who, uh, who gets knocked out first. That's funny. Um, did you watch the uh, the UK tournament? Yes! Holy shit. That was. A- I- yes and no. Yes and no. I will, I will say the right two guys made it to the finals. As, uh, as, as I was, well, he's partial to Mandrews. He wanted Mandrews in the finals. I think it would have been a better match. A fan in that tournament. I, I, I was cheering for Mandrews, but I knew he wasn't going to get there in the end because, again, he's a, he was a TNA guy. And he was Pete Dunne, too. Yeah, dude, Pete Dunne is amazing. Dude, he's the next one. I don't think being a TNA guy is uh, a bit of an issue. 
issue anymore thanks to I don't know Bobby Roode. Yeah, I know. Fucking but, style, but not the. But, but it's not like he made an impact on impact. Not, but he's not going to be the first champion for WWE. No, but I think if anyone, he's going to be a contender because. Oh, oh no doubt. Uh, you can't deny that he was the ultimate fan favorite. Oh yeah, no, no doubt. I was hoping for a skateboard too because he has that dynamic dudes gimmick going. Um, hey, you know what? It's a tournament. It's classy. Okay? Yeah, yeah. No skateboards. You know, television show for that soon. Right? Yeah, but uh, no, Pete Dunne. Oh my God, that guy. I thought he was going to win the whole damn thing when he that. Fir- okay, I'll just tell you, the bitter end is going to make the top five of my finishers. Dude, now. yeah, that was a that's a cool little freaking move, dude. The the pump handle no flatliner. Anything anymore? So yeah. I always love seeing someone who uses a pump handle to set something up. Yeah, and he sets up a fucking flatliner. That was like the move of the tournament too. It seemed like three or four guys used a flatliner at least. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. Look, I ain't gonna argue if a move works. Yeah, no, exactly. But no, Pete Dunne is gonna—he's gonna be the next William Regal, dude. His facial expressions are on point. Him trying. I knew it. I knew William Regal and Daniel Bryan had a fucking love child somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was pretty. Yeah, that really was it because he was wearing Daniel Bryan maroon, um, and uh, fingers and hands and shit. Yeah, dude. I mean, it was it was funny to watch him, but, but man, when he when he attacked his second round opponent at the end of the first night, William Regal oh, snapped around. snapped on him so fast, and I was like, dude, what the hell? And then the second time, right, he he attacked. Um, the eventual winner, and which I'm all of a sudden blanking on his goddamn name, right? Tyler. Now. Tyler Bate. Tyler. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but uh, he attacked Bate after Bate won his semifinal match. William Regal comes out and spins him around, and I'm waiting for Regal to throw a punch. I thought Regal was going to throw one at him, and and uh, freaking Dunn fell down and then got back up real fast and ran to the back, and I was like, oh my god. Well, Regal looked legit pissed, like legit. You know what that's it's called good acting. I know, but yeah, still, well, like, no, that telling, was setting up the television show. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if that means Regal is going to be one of the main producers over there. Well, if they do like monthly tapings, that means he can still do that show and still do NXT. Yeah, that'd be nice. And then I heard um, you saw that there was different promotions, uh, the promoters and stuff there. Um, what was it? Um, what was it? Progress. I forgot what they were. Yeah, Progress and ICW. Yeah. yeah, I think ICW just actually signed a deal with WWE to be on the network. Thank God. There's going to be a lot of wrestlers there we're going to want to see. Well, here's the fun part. Okay. There are some guys that are under contract with TNA right now that go over and wrestle with ICW. <laughs> so. I got no problem with that. Well, so, no, but here's the fun part. Will they now all of a sudden will those wrestlers have to like not take those shows because what happens usually in TNA the TNA contracts they can they you can can't be on they uh, can't pay-per-view. be on pay per views or on television programming they can go do the shows but they can't be used as part of the, the uh, they can't be on DVD well, I think they're not either. televised already then I most likely expect the ICW program we will see would be what they normally televise yeah. So if they already produce it for television in general, I don't expect them to change it. And all of a sudden, we're going to see TNA wrestlers on WWE. See, yeah, I, I'm just my hope is that some of these TNA guys that go I over there and throw some shit out there and see if it sticks to the wall. Yeah, you know? I'm just hoping that some of those TNA guys don't end up getting sued for breach of contract by going and appearing on some other show where now all of a sudden they're on the network they're, and they're rival. Yeah. yeah, so that's my word and my fear because Galloway, I know for sure has wrestled there. Yeah. Um, so that's a possibility of Galloway appearing on the on the network. Um, yeah, but let's say this finally opens up the network to what we want it to truly be. Yeah, I would love for that. I mean, if they can get Progress, if they can get Revolution Pro, if they can get uh, WCPW from over there. Did they get involved? Hell yeah. That, that, that's, that's like the next... I thought that was the logical step. I, can they get maybe, I don't know, ROH's backlog? That would be nice. Like, oh, it's over like ten years old. Let's put it on the network. Yeah, why not? Hell, work with. Uh... Shit, they don't even sell DVDs that are older than four years old. Yeah, why not work with? Like, once they once they go through a run of their DVDs, they're done. It should be once those shows are no longer in production or uh, being sold as DVDs, they should be viable <laughs> footage for someone to rent. Why can't WWE? Well, maybe WWE can rent that. Yeah, you know? That, that I makes... would love to see some old... I mean, come on. Look, now that Nigel's announcing, yeah, I think people are going nuts to see 
Nigel and Brian's last match in ROH. Yeah. Back in 2009. That would be that would be awesome to see. Though. I mean, hell, just uh, uh, Nigel and anything. I mean, in general, or to see Austin Aries back in Ring of Honor. Uh, I mean, Samoa Joe versus. I mean, AJ, yeah. Styles. AJ Styles. First match of the company was uh, the first main event. I think was. Uh, Oh god, what was it? I think it was Loki, Christopher Daniels, uh, Brian Danielson, and Doug Williams. Nice. That'd be a fun one to watch. Or that was like this uh, four way. I think they did like an Iron Man match. Whoever had the most falls at the end would be the new champion. And I think Loki won. I think Loki was the first. I used to be able to do like the first fifteen hundred weight champion off the top of my head. I mean, or even to be able to see footage of of Champa coming in as a, as a rookie. And really, just starting out and going through the growing pains. Sucking so well, bad. he didn't like him at the at the first point. But but, they suck. but what about like somebody like a Jerry Lynn who was there off and on? Amazing, right? Amazing, there for, amazing, amazing right. was there for a while. Yeah. Kilo Brown has shown up. Some early Kevin Steen. Yeah, why not? El Generico. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, that'd be amazing. Delirious. I love Delirious. Delirious was fun. I know you hate him, but I love Colt Cabana. <laughs> CM Punk, old stuff. I mean, people, I would watch that stuff. Not you, but I would. I'm Are you kidding thing. me? I still love, look, 2006, when I started going to ROH, to 2010 was their golden age. And I got to be there for most of it, okay? Maybe even up till 2012, because that's when we got the whole Kyle O'Reilly and uh, Adam Cole showing up as Future Shock and splitting up and... Um, uh, David Richards, Eddie Edwards, and uh, Roderick Strong were headlining most of the shows. Yeah, that would be another one, Roderick Strong now, who's in uh, NXT. I yeah. still can't believe that. Yeah, that that boggles my mind that they actually signed him. Um, but yeah, no, I totally I agree with you. Roderick Strong is two years fucking younger than me. Jeez, he is? His weight. So he's what? He's 32? Yes, last I checked, he was 32. Holy shit, he's my age. God damn it. I know. Holy shit, he's two years older than me. What's up? He's been putting on awesome matches for like a decade now, and he's only fucking 32. Damn, dude, that's insane. Or even to a point... Like when Loki debuted in pro wrestling, he was just fucking Loki. Yeah. Like, some people just have it, man. Yeah, I mean... Like, he got a debut, he was fucking game track. Like, I don't believe this shit. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to see some of that older stuff. Or, like, hell, Jimmy Jacobs is on WWE Creative. You can go see some of the Age of the Fall stuff from back in the day. Actually yeah, scrap, scrap iron. iron. Yeah, exactly. Sarah Del Rey and the yeah, mm-hmm. the freaking anything with the Kings of Wrestling in it. Claudio and and Chris Hero yeah. with Sarah Del Rey. All three of them are with the company. I actually didn't like Chris Hero. I think he is a cr- well fat piece. He's of crap. a fat piece of crap. He's a decent. He's re- a fat piece of crap. Hopefully, he'll be able to not be a fat piece. Of crap. He, I, I, I will, I will admit, he is a good wrestler, but he let his body go, and it is very, very disturbing to see him. <laughs> and at one point, I'm, I told Brian this, and I think I've told you this before. Um, at one point in time, when I was at the CAC. I happened to go to one of the um, one of the seminars, and up next to me comes Chris Hero to sit down, and he goes, "Hey, is this this seat taken and whatnot?" And I go, "No, no, we just start chit chatting back and forth about well, what I do and what." It, and obviously, I knew what he did. Um, but if he would have known about all the shit I talked about him <laughs> back when we were on OWW um, on the forums and stuff, because he used to wear like this gay ass looking tank top all the time, because he was he was not a svelte guy all the time. He had his moments where he was in better shape, and then he would get chubby, and then he would get in better shape, and now he's super freaking tubby. So what you're saying is, if he knew what you were saying, he probably would have. He probably would have hit you and he, beat the crap out of you. He probably would have flipped that elbow pad Stiff inside out you. and freaking elbowed me in the face. Um, would you blame him though? No, not at all. Not at all. But uh, yeah, hopefully not, because I have a very very soft chin, and I'm trying to get <laughs> Scott back in here because I lost Scott. I don't know if it's my connection. Scott, where'd you go? I don't know if it's my connection or if it was Scott's connection. And he logged off, so I'm assuming something happened with his Skype. Yay! Woo! Skypey, Skypey. So, Brian's taking over Scott's spot? No. Damn it. This will always be Scott in my show, not yours. Damn it. Sorry. Come on, give me like a 10 second, like... That was my 10 seconds, wasn't it? You have uh, one chance to say the name of our former show while Scott's not here. Real quick, go. Uh... 
gorilla position? No, you're an idiot. You yeah. just blew it. Alright. Hi, Scott. We'll allow you to come back now. Was that your Skypey Skypes I'm screwing up? No, I think my internet connection decided to go out on me for a second there. Oh, yeah. I'm like a motherfucker oh, right now. Oh, man. Well, the funniest part was in the process of this happening, I gave Brian the opportunity to say the name of our former show, and he completely which, blanked. Which show? There's so many. Because he wanted to take your spot. He goes, hey, Scott's gone. Dan and Brian gets to take over now. And I'm like, okay, say our, the name of our former show. And he said the gorilla position. And I'm sitting there thinking, dumbass. I meant ba we, blow, right? No, no we used wait. to do a show called Claw Inc. Radio Randomness. Oh, R. Yeah, no oh, I shit. thought you meant yours No, Scott. I was being an idiot. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I was just about to go tell you what the name of your show was. I still don't know. What was it again? I I don't, I'm lost. Look at your hand and then think about it. <laughs> Guys, I'm missing three fingers. <laughs> oh, okay. Random. Several brain cells. <laughs> Dude, it was so funny. When we first got here in Texas, um, there Brian, we go. Brian's friend, Esser, had us over for a barbecue after we all moved in. Brian does a, a, he does a quote-unquote trick. It's a magic trick. I've perfected it, and I've shown an actual magician, and he thought it was awesome. Well, yeah. he Brian likes to mess with little kids, not in the way that everybody is probably jumping to conclusions right now, sickos. I'm not Michael Jackson. Um, but uh, Pee Wee Herman, maybe. No, oh God. But Brian, because of the claw, um, likes to mess with kids sometimes. Just people in general. I do it to adults, too. That's true. It's uh, just funnier with but kids. But he, he fakes it like he – nobody realizes he has the claw. And so one of the kids that was there, the sons of uh, one of the people there – um, he says, oh, I'm going to do a magic trick. And then all of a sudden his fingers disappeared. And then he like basically almost traumatizes the kid when his fingers don't Hold come on, back. You got to explain it better. So what I do is I put my hands together and don't let them see that I'm missing fingers. And before that, I kind of move my hands around really fast. So they can't see that I'm missing fingers, but so they don't think about it. So what I do is I have, I put my hands together and I put, have them put their hands on my hand and quote unquote close their eyes, concentrate, and use their energy to like transform my hand and my 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 claw. And then all of a sudden I reveal that there's three fingers missing and they freak the hell out every time. Yeah, and then he, they freak out when they can't put the fingers back. <laughs> well one right, so what was the story about Chris Hero? Because I got up to you sitting there bullshitting with him. Okay, uh, no, the CAC, he sat next to me at the CAC at one of the, uh, the seminars, and... What was this, like, nine years ago? Uh, yeah, it would have been maybe ten now, 2007, eight, something like that, I can't remember when it was, um, but, uh, yeah, he happened to sit next to me at one of the seminars, and I'm, like, sitting there thinking to myself, oh, shit, if he knew all the shit I talked about him. And you were so Trump. nice to him, you little suck up. Something yeah. Like oh hell yeah! I ain't gonna get freaking elbowed in the mouth, man. What? I would have paid to see that. <laughs> can I tell him? Can I tell him now? I'm gonna cut this part out and I'm gonna send it to him. No. I should. I just think. <laughs> I'm really surprised they brought him back, seeing how Did they let him go already. Like, they fired him because he was, you know, soft around the uh, edges. Yeah, he was tubby as now fuck. He's a donut. Well, they, they told him straight up, either thin out or you're gone. He didn't really thin out, so they said, all right, you're not taking this serious. We're not going to take you serious. Yeah, no, it definitely has. Uh, he's still, still round in the damn middle. What's wrong with that? When you're a pro wrestler, everything, when it's not part of your gimmick. Oh, okay. That's that's true. Look, if you're not 400 pounds in pro wrestling, you've got a problem. Yeah, you basically have to either be super massive and and part of your gimmick, or you got to be pretty spelt. I mean, or he in the case, not into part of his gimmick, or in the or you got to be Kevin Owens. Yes, <laughs> exactly, Scott. So yeah, man, I, it's just funny how that worked out. But yeah, the Kings of Wrestling are all in the WWE. Why not bring their I'll footage? I'll tell you this right now: one of the greatest moments in wrestling was one of the first ROA shows I went to. For myself, I mean, yeah, uh, it was a great moment. But it was when the Kings of Wrestling beat uh, Generation Next for the title. Generation they Next it, hitting one of the guys with a briefcase in the head because Claudio Castagnoli was, you know, all about the money. And 
they pretty much stole the titles. Now, we were chanting Kings of Wrestling. And the other half of the crowd was chanting, shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's funny. So it's Kings of Wrestling, shut the fuck up. Kings of Wrestling, shut the fuck up. But the best part was, was about four matches later, randomly, Kings of Wrestling, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Now, uh, what was the... Uh, the chant would continue throughout the night because, <clears throat> fuck, the Kings of Wrestling won and Chris Hero was awesome then. I actually like it. When Chris Hero started doing the Young Knockout Kid gimmick, I did not like it. I remember kvetching and bitching and moaning and just completely fucking hating it. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. it grew on me in the right way. You know, it's like, oh, so that's what he's aiming for. Okay. Yeah. Well, now with... I mean, I've seen him wrestle at Evolve. He could still wrestle pretty well. I'm not going to knock his wrestling. I didn't say he can't wrestle, but he became a fucking fat turd. No, he is. Though I saw him. It was him. From one fat turd to another. Chris Hero, you're a fat turd. <laughs> I mean, I guess he has to take that in stride, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, considering now, he kind of has to. Um, but, yeah, no, I saw him. It's, it's health. I mean, you know, when you put on that much weight, Yeah. Oh, did we lose Scott again? We might have lost him again. Oh no! Scott, tag me in. Tag me in. Wait for the click. Wait for the click. If he clicks, that means he tags me in. Nope. Where's the? Damn it! Where's the click? There's no click. I think he just muted himself, and he calls me stupid. No, don't be like that. <laughs> Scott. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Claw Inc. Radio Randomness. Mm -hmm. Radio Randomness. Yeah, nope. Scott disappeared for a second and is not Claw Inc. Radio Randomness. God damn it, I tried. It is Girl of Blood. Brian is trying to live in the past. Do you blame me? No, not at all. Because you're like, oh. You also can't get away from me. Yeah, he is my roommate now. Woo! For stupid decisions. <laughs> yeah. God help me. Um, But, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, we're uh, going to try to get Scott back on here again. I don't know if we're going to be able to, only because he's having... Over Tons of issues, over apparently. Yeah, overheating issues with this computer, so... Oh, I was going to go for mental. There it comes. Yay. Damn it. Are you back now? Is your computer dying? What? Hey, computer. One day your time will come. And when it does, fall to the fucking moon, Alex! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was awesome. <laughs> God, I'm so aggravated at this piece of shit. Pow, right in the CPU. God damn. I, 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 I'm going to have to invite someone over, and I'm going to have to find a way to get on my roof, because this motherfucker's going off it. All of a sudden, my brain went back to uh, office space and just beating up on the computers, and damn, it feels good to be a gangster. <laughs> Well, you know, Scott, me and Daniel did talk about going out there for SummerSlam. Just saying. If you bring a new computer with you, we will fucking do that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, man. We'll see how it goes. I'm still. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Rumble, but as for us, I mean, driving down there at hotel. Thank God I paid for a lot of the stuff ahead of time. Um, uh -huh. We only thing we really have to worry about is gas food. and food, which is. Good. I mean, gas is nothing. Not gas not much good. out here, but. I'm sure Brian is plenty of that. Yeah, unfortunately. You want some? I'll pass. I've had my own. <laughs> <laughs> but, I feel sorry for anybody who walked by me when they weren't looking. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hashtag drive-by. I feel bad for those kids, man. Look, there's sometimes you just can't hold it in. Yeah. And then you have to teach kids that people <laughs> fart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag blame the, blame the child. I'd blame the kids. Actually, most of them blame each other. <laughs> Whoever spilled the Delta. Mr. Scott, did you fart? Like, oh, someone farted. <laughs> well, you know, that's something everyone does. If I were you, I'd be like, can you prove it was me? <laughs> whoever dealt it, whoever smelt it, dealt it, whoever denied it, supplied it. <laughs> yeah, that would only get me in trouble. Yeah, so. Um, oh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I hope I hope WWE will eventually bring in uh, footage from other places. I mean, even to a point of of talking with PWG or talking with Championship Wrestling oh, yeah, from. Yeah, we were on this subject. 
<laughs> yeah, talking from for that championship wrestling from Hollywood or whatever. I mean, because there are apps oh, out there. Uh, did, yeah, like, when you're listening to the tournament, you're Michael Joel, name, Michael Cole, name drop PWG. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's been pretty awesome. The whole tournament itself was great. But the whole idea of getting that footage, getting that extra show from the UK at least, not just ICW, but the UK WWE show, it's going to showcase a whole different breed of athletes. And, I mean, we're, there's... If you're me more Wolfgang, I'll be happy. You know what? I liked him. I liked, um, what's his name? The Mustache Mountain guy. Um... Was, Mustache uh, Trent Mountain. Seven. Trent Seven, yeah. He, he was, was good. He was funny. I can't um, believe he had that follower. Than yeah, and you know what? I <laughs> I liked um, the fact that they let Tommy End wrestle as Tommy End in the UK, because I know they're changing his name, which sucks. Yeah, but Alistair Black is a good fucking name. Yeah, it is. Which, yeah, I, I, it is. I mean, I'm... You can't I'm, deny that Alistair Black is a bad no, it is. It is a good Chris, name. And Tommy Yen is a payable name. Well, I and just... I was like, this is for the guy. I, was, I actually got... I was like, I did not see this coming. And then Tommy Yen was like, oh, shit. Nice. Yeah, when he came out, I marked out. And I was telling Brian, I'm like, hey, Brian, listen for the chance. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no, and listen. And they didn't censor him at all because you hear the crowd going, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy fucking end. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it's on the network. It's a live broadcast. It isn't censored on the replays either. No, yeah, but Tom, yeah, dude, Tommy ends a beast. That guy's gonna do great in WWE. Oh fuck! I was like, I was, I was, I was actually, I've never seen Tommy end wrestle before. Yeah, he's a good wrestler. But I, of course, I know of him. Mm -hmm. So like, I just love that you know WWE's been killing it with these these signings lately. Yeah, and and he's one of those guys. Like, you do notice, like. It's a totally like new breed of, of wrestler they're bringing in. They don't care necessarily if you have that alternative look to you with the tattoos and crap anymore. Uh, because punk kind of shown, that's what people want to see. Exactly. Or y you can look a little like crazy and be okay. I mean, look at the whole sanity group. I mean, that whole sanity. Yeah. Well, the whole sanity group in itself, I mean, is basically what I mean. Tommy End has the same look. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like that that'll work too. So and and dude, freaking Nikki Cross is freaking nuts. She's playing a hell of a character there. So Jesus Christ, just make sure you're even hotter. Yeah. That's just funny, because some I saw somebody was talking about that the other day about um how like all of a sudden like these crazy all of a sudden the crazy nut job wacko bird chicks are coming out again. And they're like especially like the ones that are basically like Nikki Cross or like even Rosemary. Someone was like, Rosemary is like weirdly hot. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'll take Veda Scott any day. Yeah, well shit. I was I was a big fan of Daphne. Oh, Daphne and and when she was coming Yeah, and when when she was coming out, it was always funny because Taz was the one who referred to her as zombie hot. <laughs> yeah. So I agree with that. Because she was. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so but, uh, yeah, man, I'm hoping that this U.K. thing – I hope that WWE has a regular weekly U.K. show. I think that would be nice to get a chance to see something different because that – at least for some reason, I, I just – I think Triple H finally – Triple H gets it. I don't think Vince gets it. Oh, Vince doesn't at all. I think – He's still worried about the why the, uh, the old – uh, system isn't working. Yeah, like why is people aren't cheering for Roman Reigns or some shit like that. But – I'm cheering for him, you son of a bitch. Yeah, but I, I really, yeah, Brian is a Roman Reigns fan. I'm not, but... um. I don't hate him. I just find him dull. Yeah, no, I, I just... Not a, not a huge fan. You own two shirts. I bought one. Yeah, one of which I bought for you because it was a birthday gift, and I know you like Roman Reigns, so don't try to deny it. I was kind of surprised you got me a Roman Reigns shirt, actually. Yeah. I just wanted to make you look like more of a target when we go to Wrestle uh, oh, Royal thanks, Rumble thanks instead of me. Then. Sorry. I'm going to have my Stone Cold shirt on. Okay. Sure. I got that Texas shirt just for that. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, it's going to be fun to see what they can put on there because, I mean, definitely you you and me, uh, I mean, we like that extra stuff. We like the stuff that doesn't look like the WWE product all the time. Having that smaller venue. Hell, I'd watch if they if they put on 
half as good of a show at a house show as they do, I mean, on NXT, I'd watch the regular main roster house shows. Hey, they used to do that with MSG. Yeah, I know. And there's some of those are on the network too. But yeah, I would watch those because sometimes the house shows are better because they don't have the big old grandiose entrances. They play the music. They walk down the aisle. And that's the it. The storyline isn't always there either. Yeah, there's no storyline necessarily. It's it's more concentrated. It's just wrestling. Mm-hmm, exactly. And that's another thing too. I would love for them to start bringing back um, into the vernacular wrestling because it is world wrestling entertainment. You can be a sports entertainer, but a lot of these guys are wrestlers now that are being brought in, which is great. So I, I, yeah, yeah, they, they really, they really figured out how to um, find the balance. I feel at least in ring product wise. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, and even with as many, as much as people have been criticizing how the cruiserweight division just doesn't kind of fit on the main roster and it's a little clunky and storylines are a little weird or whatever. You just let them go out there and wrestle, and they'll wow the hell out of you. Period. Gallagher and Davari, their rivalry, whether or not you put them on a microphone or whatever between Raw and 205 Live, um, their rivalry is great. I really have enjoyed everything that they've done. Yeah, I just started watching 205 Live on two episodes in. So. Yeah, it's pretty darn good. Um, I like the fact that you can tell the difference between 205 Live and their matches on Raw. Yeah, the the ones on Raw are a little watered down. 205 Live, they let them wrestle, which is great. Yeah, it's actually very comforting. Jesus Christ, you are joking about uh, uh, Cedric Alexander and Noam Dar working well together. Yeah, dude, they they do. They work very well together. And the storyline that's playing on between Raw and 205 Live with Alicia Fox. Um, it makes that it actually makes that rivalry even more so um, better. And then uh, supposedly you know, here in the next couple of weeks, your boy Tazawa is going to officially make his in ring debut. I thought he was to debut this week. Uh, I don't remember seeing him this week. I'm trying to remember. I don't. I think they showed a, a promo video for him. Can I just get Tazawa and Tajiri? <laughs> um, I just want that match. That would be fun to see for sure. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. And but. they're just yelling at each other in Japanese and no one fucking understanding what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> like they're having backstage promos. They're just cursing each other out in Japanese. Or maybe they're just like, you know, talking about kittens and shit. But they're just doing it in such a way that we're just like, what's going on? Why are they so angry? Oh, God, are they going to fight? They're going to fight. Well, the fun part would be to throw Funaki back there as like interviewing them both and then just making shit up in English. <laughs> So pretty much Funaki's career. Basically, yeah. He instead of being SmackDown's number one announcer, he'll be two hundred five live number one announcer. <laughs> uh, he's got a gig actually calling the shows in Japanese. Yeah, he does good. He's yeah, he's been doing every pay per view now as part of that desk. Which Honestly, is great. I'd rather listen to the Japanese pay per views sometimes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Although, you have to admit, Cole and McGinnis work really well together. And you know what? Michael Cole finally, finally sounded like a fan. And I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, I love when Cole fanboys out about pro wrestling. Because you know he got into this, this gig because he loves fucking pro wrestling. Yeah. And when he doesn't have someone in his ear just constantly talking shit, he gets the call pro wrestling, and you can see how much he loves it. Yeah, it was it was great, and they worked really well together for the most part. There was a couple of times Cole was stepping on McGinnis, um, but I, he's really doing that on purpose. I think he's just you know they, McGinnis kind of got to get his voice out. There. Yeah, they yeah McGinnis has to has to step up and just start speaking and not just wait for a, an opening all the time. Otherwise, Michael Cole is going to end up dominating the conversation. Um, but yeah, I, I really. But if they were to get them more often, I'll be happy. You know what? I wouldn't mind McGinnis coming in and taking over for Graves on uh, NXT. Well, he- here's here's the the kicker now. There's a rumor going around that Michael Cole may be removed from the desk on Raw, and that he may be moving to a backstage role. And if that happens, Is it all that I don't want that. Yeah, I know. All of a sudden, like, right when I'm starting to enjoy Michael Cole, I never thought I would ever say that in my lifetime. 
Um, he was my rumble pick. Fuck him. <laughs> you remember that when we did the random rumble pick thing in like three years ago? <laughs> oh, God, that was awesome. Yeah. I missed the days of us doing uh, the prediction league. See? Yeah. So yeah, we got to start maybe doing that again. We'll 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 try to do a thing. I'll I'll send out an email to the 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 group of old guys and and try to. Uh, Get that going again. We'll try to get that started for the Rumble here. We got a, we got a little over a week. Um, but, uh, yeah, the rumor is Michael Cole might be moving to a backstage role. Uh, they, they say backstage. I don't know if that means backstage still on camera as a figurehead. Backstage as in I'm just going to be on the writing team or booking team or whatever. Can he replace Mick Foley? That would be nice. I Mick Foley is, yeah, he's struggling. Yeah, I feel bad for him. So, I, I'm not sure how that's he's gonna just work. Just not, he's just, uh, just doesn't have that steam anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate because Mick Foley's such a nice guy too. Oh, I'd love to see Mick Foley do something in general in pro wrestling on Raw or SmackDown, or even go down to like you know NXT and replace Regal as a complete. Who's now going to go to you know, the UK and run that? Which. There's just so much storylines being told right now with those little civil statements. But yeah, I just I, I I think Michael Cole is just that much better, and he's oh I like to heal Michael Cole. Mm-hmm. I I liked when he showed up in NXT for a day, yeah, being the bastard bad guy. Yeah, because well, he got crowd reaction just by existing. Yeah, yeah, and and you know what? It, it's funny because I right now. With the NXT group, I don't think Percy Watson is going to last too long over there. I haven't even gotten up to Percy Watson's uh, yeah. yet. He's very, very average. Um, he's just you, you could tell he just hasn't found a stride yet um, for the first few shows. So far, he's done. Um, but um, Graves and whatever the fuck the other guy's name is, I'm blanking. I'm, dude, I'm having a bad night when it comes to names. Tom Phillips. Thank you. Um, they work very well together. Um, I, I find it. Oh God, I love them to just be raw. Those two should just run raw. Yeah, I think they can move Tom Phillips up to raw and replace Michael Cole, and that would be okay. Put him, Byron, and and Corey to keep them all together like that. Byron in outer space, please. You say what? Byron in outer space? No, I just want to shoot him in outer space. Not even in a rocket. Just let me put him on top of the rocket. Like stick the rocket up his ass and the. I actually, I think we should give credit to to Saxon and uh, and Corey Graves. I think those two together are amazing. They play off each other so damn well. Yeah. Oh, their back and forth banter is okay, but after a while, just let's make a fool out of Byron Saxon for three hours gets old. Well, he does that to himself. It's kind of like, it, is it just? It's just it's fucking old. Is it just me or it's Byron Saxon <clears throat> becoming coach? Oh my god. Uh, I mean, basically, it was. Coach was fucking on the mic though. Yeah. Okay? He he had a charisma to back up being a joke. But <laughs> that's true. That is very true. Because Coach was in the rumble a couple times. Yeah. And he was being a smart ass and yeah. The funniest part is I mean Heel Coach you he heel coach was so smarmy you wanted to just walk up to him and be like Fuck you Kinda still do when I watch ESPN <laughs> You see? That's how good of a fucking heel he is. My question is, is he doing the XFL special? Yeah, in two weeks they're supposed to be doing an XFL E60 special. Because <laughs> we really need to relive that shit. I thought it was funny, man. I enjoyed watching the XFL, but I love the fact that, like, there was no coin toss. It's put the ball on the 50 and ready, go. Go for it. Go for it. And it was Honestly, like... Honestly, the idea of uh, whoever gets the ball first and, uh, uh, you know, uh, steal the bacon... I'm down. Yeah, I like that. I thought that was pretty cool. But unfortunately, we had too many injuries on the quote-unquote coin toss. Uh. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's football, not ballet. Yeah. Huh. Well, see, and that's the thing, too. Um, Like, the XFL, I what I liked about the XFL in general was. It was different. It was. I mean, it was amateur football. They say it was professional football. It was amateur football. I mean, granted, some you of those. One I step up over, you know. Was that? You know what I hate about the XFL? Hmm. A fucking hitman sucking dick. Oh <laughs> <laughs> my god. He had one good move. A set fucking defender just goes and clotheslines a quarterback. <laughs> and that was the end of the career. Yeah. That was the end of it for the hitman. After that, it just went downhill. 
Yeah. Well, see, I the one thing that I wish they would have done in general, um, I think having Vince McMahon out there on the first day, I think ruined it. Um, I think they just should have gone out there and just played the game. Having Jim Ross on commentary was a mistake. Oh yeah. Um, right for for most of those games, um, but ultimately it was fun. Like I enjoyed. I mean, it was. It almost felt like like it was. I guess a professional esque version of like a beer league. Like it, it had, Oh my god, it was basketball. It kinda it kinda had that feel to it. It was like we're trying I would watch the shit out of basketball. I love that movie. Yeah. I mean it was it was one of those things where it felt like it could be legitimate, but it also with the WWE moniker behind it, people thought it might have been rigged or fake or whatever. Um but uh, it really was. I mean, that whole Hitman shit to start with. Yeah. Well, but granted, some of those guys legitimately went on to the NFL and played. Like Rod Smart, the guy who had he hate me on the back of his jersey. He was a running back in the league for about four years in the NFL. He played for the Raiders one year. Uh, Tommy Maddox, the the quarterback for the uh, the the big game uh, million dollar game champions, uh, the LA uh, Extreme. Um, he went on to win a Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, Jose Cortez, the kicker for the LA Extreme, went on to play for the 49ers for like three years as their kicker. So, he didn't help them, though. Not very much. But um, Yeah, but that's like getting fucking ball players from Canada, okay? <laughs> some of the ball players from Canada turn out to be okay. I mean, it, it's, it's it not. Sounds like any ball players from Canada. You take, you take people that are used to playing hockey. I was going to say, didn't Warren Moon play in Canada? <laughs> and he turned out to be one of the okay, best. So <laughs> fit the norm, okay? Okay, okay. And it being more moons. The more moon fit no norms because he was a black quarterback during a time when they were not. Yeah, and he was fucking amazing. And it's funny, now that I think about it, I don't know why. Maybe it's just me, but at one point in time, didn't he and Norman Smiley have the same haircut? I just vaguely. Master Soul's haircut from Norman Smiley. I just all of a sudden I have that vision in my head of like them with the same haircut, and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That's another name, dude. I think he's Norman got it. Smiley. Norman Smiley's another guy down the line who should probably get some sort of recognition. I don't know about Hall of Fame, but between him and Finley and Malenko, all those guys who are road agents now gotta get freaking some sort of recognition. Even a freaking road dog. Like, road dog's a backstage agent now. Yeah. So is, uh, isn't Devon Dudley one? Devon just, yeah, just started doing stuff more in the back, yeah, backstage area too. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of those guys need, I mean, the Dudleys are going to get in the Hall of Fame anyway. Jamie Noble. Noble, yeah, Noble and, and Mercury are backstage agents too, so. Mercury should just get it for them breaking his face. They should, that, you know what, that would be one of those things where. And they come back as the Predator. <laughs> that was flying. I honestly, I think if they ever actually have a physical location for the WWE Hall of Fame, even if it's just a, a, a random building on the same grounds Come on, in it's Stanford, gonna be, it's going to be Florida or it's going to be Connecticut. Well, Those yeah, no, two. if it's somewhere near Stanford or something, have the building. They have to at least put like one room in the building dedicated to like the worst freaking injuries ever like just even if it's just like a quarter of a room Sid Vicious you have Sid Vicious's leg going crazy which that was shown on TV the other day and I don't remember why but it, it was shown on like worst injuries or whatever and they showed the clip of Sid jumping off the middle rope and blowing his knee backwards um, it wasn't his knee he shattered his shin, his shin I'm sorry yeah he it, shattered his everything yeah it was at the yeah it was the two the shoe shin bone it looked like jello yeah it was disturbing uh, I remember when I missed the pay-per-view because I didn't pay for pay-per-views and they started the next uh, Nitro with the clip I'm like oh I gotta get this on tape couldn't get the tape in fast enough because I was taping wrestling matches at the time yeah. and I usually didn't put the tape in until WWE anyway because fuck WCW it's like oh I didn't get the, didn't get the tape in on time then I saw I'm like I'm glad I didn't get that on tape <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and then they just kept showing it from different angles <laughs> and then his foot like it, it happened to his left leg and, uh, yeah, when he went down, it literally folded in half. Most disturbing. Yeah, uh, he was able to kick the inside of the back of his knee. Yeah. That's how bad it was. And, uh, <laughs> then when his leg was there, 
It's not like you break an ankle, the ankle's flopping, the whole fucking leg is flopping to the left. The yeah. look in his face, though, is priceless. Well, uh, you know what's funny is that it makes me think of, uh, uh, what the, remember, uh, like, the stupid, like, celebrity deathmatch type stuff. Like, some of, the, like, the fake phony injuries you've seen on Celebrity Deathmatch, yeah. that's what freaking Sid's leg looked like. It was nasty. But Mercury... Get- Remember that, um... <laughs> gimmick late in, um... Oh, God. American Gladiators at the end at one point that Terry Crews got to start on? Vaguely. Terry Crews got to start on that? Well, one of his starts... I know. He's like, like a game like no, like no no money or some shit like that. <laughs> some, Let me see if I can find the name of it. But it was like uh, it was like American Gladiators. It was an offshoot. Oh, okay. And, uh, and um, I remember there was this one battle to. I remember that. I do remember that. It was tea money. I do remember that. Well, there's one guy on the show. God, what the fuck was his name? Well, he played a Latino too. Probably Latino, but he played like a Latino biker. Okay. You know. And I remember they did this thing where like they had a rotating pyramid. You had to try and like get up to the top and hit a button yeah. or something, and, or throw the uh, throw the other guy off. It was like the version <coughs> of the gladiator, and he got tossed, and his ankle went one way and his body went the other. Oh. And he was holding his leg up, and his ankle was just flop, 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 flop. Oh, bad. Oh man. But yeah, and I never forgot that. Yeah. I'm a king, I think his name was. Yeah, I honestly, I think they 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 gotta have like a little section dedicated to like the worst injuries ever, because Sid will be in there. I think uh, Mercury will definitely be in there. He'll probably be number number two. I think they have to uh, they have to talk. Brock about- Lesnar almost killing himself. Yeah, that, well, he wasn't actually injured, but uh, Foley's ear getting ripped yeah. off. Uh, Foley's everything. Yeah, Foley yeah. have hell. Sabu. Hell in a cell. Just hell in a cell. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I'm waiting for somebody one of these days to try to, like, do a cartoon recreation. Not the video game, but a cartoon recreation. But put, like, Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner sound effects on it. So, like, when he goes through the cage and into the ring, it makes, like, a Mick Foley-shaped crevice in the ring. That'd be funny. No, I want to hear the goofy yell when he falls through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like Goofy, though. Yeah, that, yeah, the Goofy. Oh, man, that's great. That's freaking hilarious. Oh, man. But, yeah, that would be fun to see stuff like that. I mean, I mean, we've seen guys break I mean, break wrists and whatever, hands Cut getting their broken. Backs. Yeah, oh, man, Hardcore Holly in that, that one random uh, ECW match, he got uh, slammed through a table and it freaking lacerated his back open. Yeah, you can see the back fat. I remember that. Yeah. He was talking about it, saying it was kind of cool. That was gross. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I mean we've seen we've seen some injuries over the years, and we lost Scott again. I think we may have to call this short if we can't get him back. Are you calling me short or him short? No, just the show. Oh okay. <laughs> Let's see if we can get him back here. If not, I take over. Skype. I take Skype. over. I'm gonna take Skype-ity over. Skype, Skype. Why are you such a pain in Don't the ass? Don't work. I just wanna. I just wanna take over. I do. As much as I love Scott. Yeah, no. it's fun to take a spot. So, but uh, yeah, no, it'd be cool to see an actual hall. I would pay money to fly out wherever it is. I honestly, I think the best area for it to be would be New York. They would have to do something that, it, like, within. Um, there he goes. Damn it! Fuck you, Skype. Fuck you, Spectrum Cable. Hey, we have Spectrum too. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, no. What we we're we were saying, like, I I, th- I would pay money. I mean, I would fly out to wherever it is. I mean, do you think that Brian mentioned New York? Would New York? Do you think like maybe MSG has? I don't know how much room MSG has, but none. None. Okay. Well, okay. they're used to WWE. Used to uh, they had their WWF New York. Yeah, they had that New that York. Restaurant. Yeah, that restaurant slash bar, whatever the hell it was. They could just Let's get... not remember that, please. They could just... Hell, they could... Isn't there like a, a wax uh, oh, thing over there? Wax museum? Or a Ripley's or something? Yeah, just like buy half of the building, kick them all over. Just literally next to Ripley's, believe it or not. See? Okay. Buy yeah. it out, close it down, 
Turn it into. I'm just saying. I, I, that shit's not gonna happen. No. You know how much money those two places make? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Vince got money though. But still. You don't got that much money. Yeah, but uh, no. In all honesty, I I just I want to see one. I want to see a physical one because I would go there. Like I love football. I would love to see the the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. But I'm not gonna. I, I mean, it's one of those things where it's not on, high on my priority list. It's kind of okay. there, but it's not up there. But I mean, for I, I want to go to Hawaii because I want to see where my grandpa was born. Um, and if oh yeah, fuck the USS Arizona. I don't. Man. Sorry, it's always been high on my list. Sorry, yeah, I know, but I. I'm, hey, I, a boat that's underwater. Sorry, sorry. Just... You forgot about the bodies. Uh, but that probably doesn't help. But I, I, I would like to go to Hawaii to at least see where my grandpa was born. And I honestly, dude, I, I, I want, I've gotten, I've checked off WrestleManias, which is awesome. I We're get to go to go a Rumble. I get to check You're that welcome. off. Um, but I, I would if they have it because I know they have a pro wrestling Hall of Fame in New York somewhere. I don't know exactly where it is. Is it really? Yeah, there's, but it's not necessarily WWE. It's not affiliated. Yeah, affiliated at all. It's like old timey. Like wrestling and up to Bruno more, San the, more the modern area, yeah. Like basically, because I mean, New York was the mecca back yeah. then. Yeah. Um, but I would, I would mind seeing that one. But I, I want to see what WWE would put out there. I actually, I'd still say out of all of those states, I think New York probably would still be the mecca of wrestling. There's a couple of them, but I think New York is probably one of the biggest. We we're still in, are pro wrestling. We're in like the Quite third simple. biggest. It, Texas is pretty pretty popular with wrestling. They, I, gotta, I mean, especially we are yeah. pro wrestling. Yeah, no, New York, the New York okay. that, that Northeast is. Yeah, it'll always be Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I mean, there 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 are pockets here and there, but I I'd, I'd say New York definitely takes the cake or the cupcakes, however you want it, Scott. No, thank you. He's turning I'll down. I'll take some baklava. Ooh, baklava. Straight from Turkey. Nice. You know what I? You know what I just bought, and Brian was looking at me funny when I was like freaked out in the store the other day. Uh, you ever had something called Tim Tams? I love them. <laughs> I've never had. Them. Okay, it's basically an Australian biscuit cookie covered in chocolate. Um, I had them when I was working at a job, uh, previous job in California, and I was just hooked on them. And then they like completely disappeared from like every freaking Target store in our area, so we couldn't get them anymore. And I found some out here in Texas when we went to the store, and I bought like two packs. Now I've got some good news. I've got some good news and bad news, Daniel. Actually, it's just bad news and bad news. Let's just say within the last twenty minutes, most of them are kind of gone now. Yeah, sure. Blind sack of shit. They're in the. They were in the fridge. Yeah, if they're gone, I will kick you in the balls. Bye, Scott. Record that. <laughs> so. Better fucking record that. Yeah. So, uh, and I know that there's another pack somewhere too. So you haven't touched those yet. I had the other pack yesterday. Yeah, no, you didn't. Because I saw them today already. He rubbed them on his ass. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ay, ay, ay. I rubbed them on my back. Oh, that's that's, right. that's even worse. <laughs> that's just as bad. <laughs> oh, good lord! It's just back like have like little shit crawling on it. You, well, he's freaking hairy, dude. Technic- actually, yes, there's a spider crawling on it all the time. Yeah, he has a spider tattoo, Spider Man esque tattoo. He needs to get it touched up so it actually looks like Spider Man logo. It's kind of fading. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting making spider it glow in the dark. Clam. <laughs> spider clam. Wow, that's. It's a little lower, Scott. It's a it's a little lower. Yeah, they were doing a out here. Well, most a lot of tattoo places were doing a Friday the Thirteenth like uh, thirteen dollar tattoo deal. Like they you pick like they give you like a sheet of like the pre made ones that are normally you see on the walls of uh, tattoo shops, and they say, okay, cool. Uh, you pick one of these and you get it for thirteen bucks, and it's like the size of like a freaking fifty cent piece. It's tiny. But they were doing that out here. Yeah, you are doing something like that for Halloween, uh, like a $30 two-by-three. Yeah. I was thinking about getting, like, a really tiny Ghost Rider. Nice. <laughs> but I just didn't have the time. Yeah, the well, the place that was doing it out here is a really, really popular tattoo place called Elm, uh, Elm Street Tattoos, um, which if you watch the, um, the Ink Master show, uh, one of the judges uh, is – that's his home shop. Um, oh, it's good that you buy a really good shop. Yeah, so 
but yeah, so it was like, yeah, I, you knew it was going to be super fucking crowded. So I didn't even go. I didn't even make the attempt because I'm like, damn it. Eh, eh, there wasn't really anything that jumped out at me that I really said I needed to have. So, um, yeah, but yeah, 13 bucks. You just, it's like, damn it. <laughs> it's almost like something that you don't want to pass up because it's so cheap. And to get something from a nice shop like that, high end shop. So. Oh, there should be another Friday the 13th or something like this. Year. Yeah. Um, Oliver Peck is the name of the artist his shop it is. Uh, so Brian is leaving us right now because he's got to wake his ass up super early in the morning to go to work. So say, Five hours. Say, Yay. say bye, Scott. Bye, Scott. Say bye, Scott. I will take you in the fingers while you sleep. Aw, he loves me. Oh, God. I will call you the stump from now on. <laughs> no. How about Stumpy? Nope. The stump. How about Stampy? The stump. Damn it. Bye. <laughs> you don't remember that from Simpsons? He stampies the elephant. Yes, I know. I'm calling myself fat. Because it's true. Good lord. All right. Nice yeah, guys. Bye, guys. You're right, okay? Yeah. I'll ruin it next time, too. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I was waiting. Uh, I was kind of figuring once you moved in together, you'd be ruining a lot of episodes. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. <laughs> He's, he came back down the hallway and gave me the fingers. I'm watching you. <laughs> and I Honestly, I was kind of waiting for him to make a comment after the stampy thing and the elephant and saying, making, uh, like, you get the reference, right? I'm fat, and I also have a trunk. Like, some stupid sexual joke or some shit. He ain't that intelligent. Yeah, but he has sometimes moments of brilliance <laughs> when it comes to making jokes. Too bad they don't happen on this show. Yeah, once in a while. <laughs> you never know. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you throw it at him. <laughs> so, oh, man. But, uh, yeah, man. It just with the rumble coming up, and, uh, I mean... Fuck, oh, fuck, by the way. Yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm excited for it, and... I mean, that was all Brian, too. Brian's the one who was able to get the tickets and shit like that, too. So. And he got you out of California, and he got you to the Rumble. Yeah. No, that's... that's He's kissing that man's claw right now. Uh, no, thank you. I don't know. I, I kind of know where that claw's been, and I don't want to. <laughs> well, yeah. that's gross. Yeah, slightly disturbing. <laughs> He's slightly about it. Oh, man. Um, no, the, it's all gross. <laughs> no, the fun part is now being here now in this new place, we got a, um, we've like combined all of our like video game freaking stuff. So we have right now, we got the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3, a Wii, and we each have a PlayStation 4. So it's kind of like, oh, can I have the other one? Well, no. Well, he that in that case, we play that way on the. Yeah, we could play different rooms and play against each other and shit, like via internet. Yeah, because we want to sit next to someone to play against. Yeah, him. fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like just before just before getting on the show, I was playing. Um, I have a PlayStation on the PlayStation Two. I have Mortal Kombat Deception, and uh, that was the one that had the partial like quest story mode in it and then it also had the regular game arcade mode and it also had puzzle mode which was Mortal Kombat's version of Puzzle Fighter so that's what I was playing hey. did you have you ever you ever played Puzzle Fighter when they did the Street Fighter version no? I know of it yeah I'm, I'm so a, like Tetris dueling Tetris games yeah basically or, or like yeah kind of like you gotta make yeah using bombs make all the color, right colors disappear and stuff yeah basically but yeah, dude, it was it was fun, man. Like I I enjoy playing puzzle games, like freaking Tetris, Doctor Mario. I have Tetris, Tetris Two, and Doctor Mario for the original Game Boy. Yeah, I got uh, I have Tetris. I have Yoshi and Yoshi Cookie, Yoshi's Cookies or whatever. I got uh I have both too actually. Yoshi was really cool because you have to do it right where you got that egg on the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then you pile as much shit on top of it until the other egg on top finally falls. Yeah, and then, it, yeah, that was that made it tough. Because then, I mean, and it was like, it wasn't like you could just, it, it was something 
you uh, things were falling randomly and you had to like maneuver things around. And but it was like the Mario holding two hands, and so you could only swap the two that were next to each other only uh, from the bottom. Like you're swapping, yeah, the rows and shit. Yeah, Yoshi Cookie was a little bit different. Yoshi Cookie was more of like. Um, you had to line up the whole row with the same cookie so that it would be deleted, and then you'd have to keep going until there's no more cookies. Yeah. And if you couldn't line them all up in one shot, then you had to wait for more cookies to come down from certain areas. But if you have, like, a really long row on the bottom, and the fucking cookie comes in from the right, you know, then you're like, ah! Yeah, so you had to worry about the right side and the left side getting completely bulked No, the up. right side and the top. Oh, yeah, right side and the top, I'm sorry. Right the top and keep that on the right. I'm sorry, yeah, but yeah, you're right. The right side and the top, not the left. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it, it's just fun to see some of those things. But yeah, the original Tetris was was my absolute favorite. Doctor Mario was probably a close second. Um, I think I beat I beat the whatever the highest generic level that they let you go to. Whether I think I remember if it was just twenty or if it was thirty. I think it was twenty. On what Doctor Mario? Doctor Mario on the NES or the Game Boy. I think it was 20. 20. I know Tetris 2 was 30. Yeah, no. Reg- well, Tetris, the original Tetris, you started at 1. You could go to 10. You could start it at 10 if you wanted to. And yeah, just everything just falls down. Yeah, because like you know, 10, 10 meant you basically just hit 100 lines, and then you can go up past it on your own. But and you, you can go up to, like, level, as high as the level as you can go, I think. Yeah, most of the time, I couldn't get past, like, I think... I could, I think the highest I ever got up to was maybe eighteen or nineteen, but that's like literally flying down the screen. <laughs> so, it's insane. At that point, like once you fuck up once, you just put the controller down. And you're like, I'm done. Yeah, like you miss just by like just yeah putting the thing in the wrong spot, and it's just it just packs up. Uh, but no, Doctor Mario. Yeah, when you had I think it was level twenty, and you had all them freaking little viruses and whatever in there, it was like. Literally, sometimes the the pill would fall into the tube, and if you didn't move left or right, you fucking lost. <laughs> like it was that's how packed that fucking thing was. Yeah. So, and how many times you had to like freaking just unbury yourself from other things, <laughs> oh, or getting the uh, the viruses sideways? Like you randomly or say, okay, cool. There's two red ones right in a row next to each other. But you can't get them from the top, and then you just happen to, like, pile a freaking red pill, double red pill, on something and balance it, and it freaking shoots it all across. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Stuff like that, dude, is was, was so much fun. But, yeah, man, it's fun to go back and, and play some of these old games again, man. Like, playing, I'm playing some old Street Fighter, um, playing some old Mortal Kombat, um... Told Tony Hawk games, old WWE games. I mean, it's. I won't lie. I used to play the hell out of Tony Hawk too uh, on the, the Game Boy Advance. Nice. Yeah. See, I would just love. I would, I would, I would always get the grinding. Um. The, the like the most expensive grinding uh, abilities mm-hmm. instead of like the flips or anything. Because mm-hmm. if you found the one like the one good uh good room or the good uh, track. You could grind constantly. Yeah, you would be able to grind. And score points like go for Yeah, you could, you could grind. You can switch into a manual so you're balancing on two wheels. Then you, like, kick flip onto another freaking rail. Then you grind. And then, I mean, it, yeah, it can be nonstop. You could end up with, like, a million points on one trick. Because you don't ever touch the ground. You don't ever fall down. I've done that shit before, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you're you're more of a, a mobile gamer then, because you're always on the bus or the subway or whatever. I have not taken a gaming system out of my house in years. No. Hmm. But you mostly have mobile stuff, though. You do have the handheld. Uh, it's much easier to play a Game Boy in the crapper than the Super Nintendo. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. So, uh, if you want the honest truth, yeah, no. So, um, what other what other stuff, uh, what other games like would you can would you consider to be some of your favorites from uh, like the uh, the Game Boy Color or whatever? Super Mario World. The original, uh, the the oh, the Super Mario. Super Nintendo. Okay, that's cool. Like the first Mario game that came with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to like Star Fox. The original Star Fox. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. I'm talking about Super Nintendo right now. Yeah. I so, got a few. Yeah, no, uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah, I, the, the graph- original Mario Kart was the shit. Yes, that's probably still still stands up today as one of the best racing games ever. Oh, that's why I own it still. Yep. I gotta get you me know, a. It was just, I mean, Super Nintendo was one of the best systems to play. It had a great look to it. Had great play. Ability uh, still felt like an old time game system. There wasn't all polygon and shit. Yeah. Except for Star Fox. Of well, the only Star thing. Fox was the only thing though with Mario Kart, the first original Mario Kart, no blue turtle shells. Thank God. I really did not like the blue turtle shells when it came. I can tell. Yeah. The, the later games pissed me off. My my one start playing with my neighbors and stuff like that because I didn't have. I had the Nintendo, and then I switched to Genesis. So, um, and so I got to play Mario Kart at his house when he, my neighbor's house when he had uh, the SNES, and then my buddy had it on 64, um, and then I've played it other times on the newer systems and stuff like that. Not very often, but I just I, it always bothered me to be in first place, and all of a sudden you get hit with a goddamn turtle shell, and you end up coming in fourth. Ah, uh, video games. <laughs> That's like the way to end, the end friendship starter pack. <laughs> I've seen those online. Yeah, video games. Yeah. So, just in general. But, uh, Nothing really better, you know? Yeah. Now, shoot. See, now, I I was never an RPG guy. Would was Were you into, uh, like, Legend of Zelda, things like that, too? See, I couldn't get into them as much as, like, other people. I mean, I, I still have, I have Legend of Zelda or Legend of Zelda 2. One of them, when, um... They did the classic NES games for the Game Boy Advance. Okay. They pretty much just ported them over. Mm-hmm. And the original games are actually, uh, the, the cartridges are actually the same color as the original. Oh, cool. The too. That's cool. cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, cause... Um, I remember when they tried, they, they took, uh, Donkey Kong Country. My God, what a fucking fantastic game that was. That was probably the game I played the most over at my neighbor's house. I and was, then they did Donkey Kong Land for the Game Boy. Nice. And now I actually have Donkey Kong, uh, the new Donkey Kong Country, mm-hmm. for the uh, DS. Nice. And it's still, like, there's no way to say it other than those games are still fucking fun. There's something about playing as Donkey and Diddy Kong and just going around, jumping on shit, throwing barrels, riding rhinos, riding that stupid cart to death, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I love the fact that in Super NES version of Donkey Kong Country, they prey on your greed on that minecart level. They put that one bunch of bananas in like the most impossible spot. The only way you get the bananas is basically if you're if you are willing to sacrifice yourself. Yeah, those bastards. But uh, no, seriously, and and it also has like one of the most iconic soundtracks too. Oh my god, man. Like, once it starts playing, it's in your head. Yeah, the freaking, the, the theme song, um, the freaking, uh, the, just, whoa, dude, my name is Funky Kong, or whatever, that shit, and then the, the freaking Gangplank Galleon at the end, um, the, the final boss, with, uh, King K. Rule, um, yeah, dude, that just, it's such an iconic game, and I'm glad that they, they freaking brought that shit back. Um, and it's one of those games that they just can never get rid of, man. It's just, it is so important to gaming history, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny to see. I mean, and uh, even even stemming from that, um, Rare, uh, I believe it was Rare who made that game. Um, they they stemmed out and they did uh, Banjo Kazooie, which that was a fun yeah. game too. Um, never played that. Oh man, that was fun. It kind of took the same concept of the look of Donkey Kong Country, but they put it in like a Mario 64 3D world. Um, yeah. Where they play. Let me tell you, once like after Super Nintendo, I never really played anything uh, that wasn't handheld. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I had a couple of handhelds there after the regular original Game Boy, um, but it was mostly later on. I had a PlayStation Portable when it first came out. Um, when they had the, I had the PSP too, but it's hacked the shit. Yeah, I, I, I bought my brother bought it, and then he's like a month later, he's like, hey, I don't really play it. You want it? And so it was like, you literally within the first couple of months, I had it, and I had like Wipeout, um, the I think it was called Wipeout as a racing game, 
Um, I think I had a baseball game. I didn't have too many games. And I and it was like, yeah, I, I freaking my brother kind of almost ripped me off because I didn't wind up playing it much at all either because most of the time I was either at home, I was playing on the console, or if I was out and about, I was actually like interacting with people or drawing or doing homework or whatnot at college. Um, so that uh, was something that just I didn't really it didn't really stick with me. Um, but I also had a um, also had a DS for a while there too. I want I I think I won a DS in some random like random con- like raffle. I, I I can't remember how I got the DS, but I remember I I think I won it in something. Um, and I played I played it only maybe for about a month or two. Um, I had the Professor Layton games, the puzzles. And I like those puzzle games, but again, it got to the same point where it was like, I just I don't. My first inclination is to not sit down to sit down and play a handheld when I have a console next to me. Um, See, I'm not a console guy, so playing a handheld don't bother me. Yeah, it makes it. Well, kind of why I've gotten addicted to playing some games on my phone now, I guess. Which is funny because there are times where, yeah, like I would rather just sit and play on my phone than play on the consoles all the time. So I, I think things have changed now for me, where maybe I would, uh, maybe I would do, look at the the handhelds a little bit differently now. But I don't know. Part of me, part of me, even like like I I want to get a Wii U for Mario Maker, and I know it's like basically now coming to an end because now we've seen the uh, the new uh, the new Wii that's supposed to be coming out there. Nintendo, what is uh, Nintendo Switch? Yeah, that looks weird. It does, and it, I'm not entirely sure exactly um, what type of. I mean, I, I haven't even seen what the, the the cartridges or the discs or whatever the hell it looks like. So I have a feeling they might even be like micro SD cards or some shit. Well, you know, DS games are already SD cards. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe they're going that way. Um, for that right, that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to buy a DS at first. You know, because the games are so fucking tiny. Yeah, you can lose them easier. Jesus. But, uh, yeah, yeah, man. It was blood for me. Tomas picked one oh, up for me. That's so cool. Like, well, I can't deny this. I, you know what the problem is? When I lived in, uh, in a different part of New York. Okay. I was about to say where exactly. Uh, in the bathroom, we actually had a plug. So I was able to plug in my, you know, Game Boy Advance and charge it while... Doing your business. Exactly. Yeah, you could basically be in there forever, and you'd be okay. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I that's become recent habit with the new Usagi Yojimbo books I've been reading. Nice. <laughs> okay. It's like I gotta go to the bathroom. Let me bring the book with me. I stopped going to the bathroom for a while because I've just been reading. <laughs> that's awesome. That's hella funny. You know, but uh, yeah, and uh, it, it was very convenient having that in there because that really helped. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if my damn thing charges anymore. I might have to buy a new one soon. Or, no, you know what? I, I, I got two uh, Game Boy Advanced. Uh, one was the original one that came out. Yeah. And then about two or three years later, they started doing these flip ones that had the backlit screen, which was amazing because you didn't have to find a light source every three minutes. Yeah. You know, and it sucks trying to play a handheld in the middle of the afternoon with a fucking light on it. Yeah, we'll see. Because you got no light from your windows because you live on the third floor with the fucking uh, sun behind your house. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's funny. I um before the move, I was going through stuff and I found my old my old uh, my old brick, my Game Boy, my brick. Um, I like to call it that. Um, and I'm sitting there thinking, That's what it is. yeah, basically big white brick. Um. And I'm sitting there, and I put new batteries in it when I got here, and, and fuck, it won't work. I'm so mad, dude. So, you can probably get that repaired. It might be a screen, you know. Well, Shit, I gotta see if mine still works. Yeah, I don't know. Well, cause, Although, I will say, when mine did work, it didn't always work. I'd have to like, turn it on four, five, six, seven different times. Okay, maybe I'll give it a try again or something like that. Because, yeah, I know, like, the last I knew... Um, I used to keep that game, uh, that Game Boy, and the case and stuff in our little uh, patio room because we had storage um, at my my parents' house, and um, I knew that my mom had grabbed it so she could play Tetris and she'd leave it by her um, her recliner. 
And I have a feeling that it probably got knocked off the table by either somebody, um, whether it was my mom, my dad, my nephew messing around, the dog, whoever. Um, I, it, I'm thinking it maybe took a couple of falls because it was working as of two months ago. And now all of a sudden it's not working. So I thought it was just the batteries, but maybe I'll mess with it a little bit more. With the- sometimes technology just says, fuck you, I'm done. Yeah, so... I mean, it had a good run, that's for sure. I had one of those the rechargeable battery packs. That was. What I got that too, and I don't know where the plug is to recharge it. Yeah, see, so mine still recharge. Mine doesn't hold. I can, I, you know what? You know what? Now you got me interested. In a moment, I'm gonna go over to my. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go look something. I got um in my bathroom. We're not doing this show right now because I'm lazy as fuck. <laughs> yeah. So, no. I took the dresser drawers and pretty much all my clothing was not existing. Instead, I have a draw of Nintendo shit. Nice. And I just opened it. And it's nothing as fucked in that one. Uh, let's see. I got a shitload of, um, cases that had, uh, I'm playing a little Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. That's where I put that. Nice. That's good to know. Uh, my old, jeez, does this even still play? So what I have right now, I just noticed, which has batteries in it, which probably all melted the fuck. My Game Boy Advance is in my hand right now. Nice. The one that requires batteries. Oh, it went on for a second. I went on and then blanked out. <laughs> I guess the batteries are dead. Nice. That is so sad. That's funny. Hey, at least oh, you know it kind of. Kind of works. That's good. That's a good sign. It did not bleed. No, that's funny. That's continue. I gotta go through the Nintendo, Super Nintendo cleaning system. See, the one thing that I've always said I wanted to get, if I ever get an, I want to buy an SNES. I, I would, think, I would love to have an SNES because I've never had one. Um, but I want to get an. Oh, S- I got two. Oh, you lucky fuck. <laughs> uh, I want to get an SNES, but I want to make sure that I get the Super Game Boy cartridge, so that I can play my Game Boy games on the console. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Well, it has uh, Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, and the Lost Levels. Which, which, is, is which was technically originally supposed to be Mario Brothers 2 in Japan, but they said it was too hard for us American folk, so they turned and basically reskinned Doki Doki Panic, which is the Super Mario Brothers like 2. I like Super Mario Brothers 2. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You know, in my lifetime, I just realized I've had three different copies of Super Mario Brothers 3. Nice. I have it for the Game Boy still. I hope I have it for the Game Boy still. Well, the Game Boy Advance. I have it in All Stars here, and uh, I had the original Super Nintendo cartridge. The original Nintendo cartridge. Nice. Mortal Kombat Two. Nice. That's the one that Mortal first had. Mortal Kombat ha- Three. Mortal. Oh wow. Mortal Kombat Three or Ultimate MK Three. Nope, just Mortal Kombat. Okay, wasn't as good. <laughs> well, Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> Star Fox. Ah, uh, Illusions of Gaia. That sounds like an RPG. It is. It's supposed to be in the same vein of, uh... Secret of Secret Mana. Of Mana. Yeah. Secret of Mana has cost like $1,000 a cartridge, and this is only like 15 Nice. Um, NBA Champ Tournament Edition! Hell yes. Fucking A! I am very happy now. <laughs> oh. Uh, NFL Quarterback Club, which I don't think I've actually technically owned this or played this. This might have been one that I found. Nice. <laughs> I'm actually very happy about I used to play the shit out of that tournament edition. I used to play with the codes, too, that gave you the uh, unlimited uh, big head focus mo- meter. Yeah, big head mode and all that extra good stuff. Oh, man. I, I used to have like the Game Informer that had all that shit, too. Now you just look it up on like, GameFacts.com. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Super Mario World. Classic. Super Mario Kart. Classic. God bless you. 
I think I borrowed that from someone and then I stopped talking. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Another football game, super high impact, but this shit was fun. Uh, you got to make make all your teams, and uh, when I used to play with someone else, all our teams were like wearing pink and had curly names, or it's called bitches and shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was back in junior high and elementary school, okay? We were allowed to some stupidity. Hey, that's alright. And a game, I wish I had the other ones too. Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Oh, dude. Yeah, those are classic. So, uh, while I don't have a huge collection of SNES games, and I never really did, I think the collection that I have is a worth it. Yeah, very much so. That's cool, dude. Shit, man. Yeah, no, that's for me. It's like, I, if I got an SNES, it would basically be... I want to get the Super Game Boy so I can play my my Game Boy games on the on the main thing. Um, I'd want to get Donkey Kong Country because that game's just absolutely raw. Yeah, and it's amazing. Um, I would want to get. I mean, Super Mario World is a is a classic. I wouldn't mind having that. Um, I would get All Stars. Yeah, I mean, I that's the thing. I somewhere Mario three, just Mario three. Yeah, somewhere in my parents' attic is my Nintendo and my Genesis that I couldn't find. When oh, bo- fuck! I killed her. I would kill for Nintendo. Yeah. I really hurt badly. Yeah. No, I I know that it's up there somewhere, but I just I didn't have enough time to go search through everything because there's like a mountain of fucking board games, and it's like like and up surrounded like Can all I the be jealous of the mountain of board games too. Yeah, dude, it's oh, dude. We have so many freaking board games at that house. Oh my god, like it, it's insane because we have there's like a whole section of the attic that's like all old like crap from when me and my sister were little. Um, so like going through just well, it, the the problem is getting to it all is hard because I like the stuff that I want to get is like kind of in the middle of everything. So I have to like peel back the fucking layers of crap. We don't have that much space up there to kind of move things around. Not to mention a couple of the boards in the attic are kind of like falling apart. So if I step the one way, the wrong way, I'm going to fall right through the fucking ceiling. Oh, I just found my Game Boy pocket. <laughs> nice. I have the black one too. Nice. And now the Game Boy so, Pocket. Let me the, straighten this up for a second. I'll tell you exactly what I just found. Nice. Okay. And uh, give me a second. Because uh, I have uh, like the Game Boy Pocket cases. You know? Mm-hmm. The, the ASC 2 Carry All Deluxe. Nice. And holy shit, it's got games in it. It's got my. Uh, well, I used to trade Pokemon to myself because I was the only person I played Pokemon with. Hey, I have Pokemon too, so I'm good. Yeah, that is very sad that I used to just trade Pokemon to myself. Hey, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's my brick. My God, it's turning orange. <laughs> That's the kind of the plastic that they made. They had to make it with for the the shell. That's why the Super NES turns that yellowish color. I know, but I'm looking at it, and it's God. It doesn't actually. You know what's weird? I just have this uh, Game Boy Pocket in my hand, and the Game Boy Pocket it almost weighs as much as the brick. But it's smaller. Like half the size. Interesting, the things you learn after all these years. Yeah, funny. Oh, I got some batteries in here. When did they expire? 2008. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and both of those completely missed the garbage can. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, just so you know, my Game Boy is so fucking old, the protective cover on the front is actually no longer on it. Oh, on the brick? Yeah. Yeah, no, mine's gone too. <laughs> oh, I still have it. Oh, no, mine my, my, mine went it's missing. It's in my hand right now, it's just underneath the Game Boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, mine went missing. After, like, I, I thought it was still on there, and all of a sudden when I got it back from my mom, I was like, where the hell did the front go? It was never on there. I'm like, what do you mean it was never on there? <laughs> It was on there. Okay, here's, um... Wow, this is fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I just found the, uh... The instruction booklet for Mortal Kombat for the Game Boy. Yeah, that game was so broken. Oh my god, like, the delay on everything is so bad. Oh god, you're dirty. Oh boy. <laughs> what do I have in here? Let me put this back there gingerly. Do 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 do. 
dude, this is I'm going through like fucking. I'm, I'm having nostalgia right now. I gotta get some batteries to see if this shit works. So I got um, Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong game, game for Game Boy, Alleyway, Double Dragon, oh, Double Dragon, Tetris, yeah. Mario Land 3, Wario Land, Yay. Yoshi's Cookie, Zelda Link's Awakening, the black and white version, not the color reprint. <laughs> uh, Pokemon Silver, Oh God, Mega Man, nice. How's that say on it? There's like other words on it. Dr. Wily's Revenge. Oh, okay. That's the official name for the game. Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Blue, and Pokemon Red. Wow, you had all of them. Shit, I only had Red. Uh, I have Pokemon Gold sitting here in the uh, Game Boy Advance, which probably expired. The battery's probably dead. Donkey Kong Land, Final Fantasy Legend 2, and the Punisher, which I can never get rid of. Oh god, that game is so fucking bad. That rail shooter crap. Uh, you know why I love that game? Because right in front of me, I had a fucking Game Genie for my fucking, uh... Oh, for the Game Boy? Yes. You lucky. If you're lying, motherfucker. Yeah, dude, that fucking hated that rail shooter. That was one of the absolute fucking worst games ever. Oh, man. Alright, now, that's just one box. There's Box more. Number two. I hate you, by the way, Kirby's Pinball Land. Now. Oh, dude, that was fun. It was fun until it all rolled over and I lost all my fucking uh, points. Oh man. Let's see. I have a Japanese copies of uh, Pokemon Green and Yellow. Head on. I have Paperboy. Yay. I have the game called Baseball Game. <laughs> the Pokemon trading card game. Okay. There's a Game Boy game version of it. Okay. Kirby's Dreamland and Kirby's Dreamland 2. Jesus Christ, man. You think I like Kirby? Kirby's Dreamland was pretty awesome, I gotta say. Still is pretty awesome. Fuck that. There's no was. There is Yoshi. Power Quest, which is like a fighting game that allowed you to uh, buy equipment for your characters to get them a little stronger. Nice. Mega Man X Dream, which I think was a Mega Man X game. Super Mario Land. Wait, the baseball's here. Which the other one has baseball? What's in the baseball game, Kate? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, Spider Man 2's in the box! Nice. Holy shit, man. I completely forgot about. Oh, man, that game was fucked up. No, I haven't. Alright, so it's sort of like a side-scroller, but not a side-scroller, because everything moves on the side, but the way it is, oh man, it is a pain in the ass, because like, you have characters you have to fight, I think one of them is uh, Green Goblin and shit like that, and he's flying around, so you have to like, climb to the top of the building to hit him, and then you fall all the way to the bottom, and then you have to climb all the way back up again, and oh god, the pain in the ass, it was so much fun. Let's see, uh, oh, shit, quarterback club. Speaking of Warren Moon. Yeah. I that, think I got all my records in this game with Warren Moon. Yeah, I was going to say, that would have been during the time of Warren Moon, Troy Aikman, Steve Young. Uh, yeah, most likely. Randall Cunningham, maybe. Uh, Super Mario Land 2. Six Golden Coins. That is still, I Tetris think. Tetris 2. I think Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins is one of the better Mario games. It's one of the better games in general. Yeah, and most people don't even think about it because they never played it, but yeah. I, I'm lucky fucks. Yeah. Let's see. Ninja Gaiden Shadow. God, this is fun. And I have no cases for some of these. This sucks. Mortal Kombat. Oh, shit, I never played this. Judge Dredd. No, no. Someone gave this to me like a decade ago and I never touched it. Probably an LJN game. Uh, nope, Acclaim. Oh, really? Yeah. It might not Honestly, suck. I thought it was going to say Kalu. Yeah, and usually if it has that, that ugly-ass LJN rainbow on it, then you may know the game's going to be crap. They did nah, a this was an Acclaim game. Uh, nope, no, it's just shit in general anyway. One of my favorite games of all times, Kix. K-I-X. That, QIX, QIX. That sounds familiar, too. Yeah, there's like this weird wave 
I hear some shit floating around where if you touch, you have to make a little eyes and you have to get a certain percentage. Yeah, I do. I do remember that. I do remember and that. And you sit there too long, a little spark will try and find you and kill you. There's these little flames that follow you around and shit. And then you have to try and capture this wave in a certain amount of feel. The more you get over that certain amount, the bigger your bonus is. Yeah, I do remember that game. I do remember that. I think I had that game, but I just can't... F I don't have it in my box of stuff. Speaking of, this is Galoop. No, nice. Uh, there's actually, um... I got a sticker on the back of it for the game machine. And on it, you have infinite lives. Start with nine lives. Start on level four. Start on level eight. Start on level thirteen. Sparks don't chase you, but can still hurt. Nice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, Dr. Mario. Of course. And of course, one of the more underrated games when it comes to uh, Game Boy games, I think. A lot of people don't know about it, I don't know of. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan. I've heard of it, never played it. Ah, oh, man. Cause you know... I played the shit out of this game. Cause that was for so that was for awesome. regular Game Boy or for advanced or that was for Game Boy, man. That was a black and white. Okay. You know, no nonsense, no nothing game. Yeah. The original. Oh, speaking of the advanced. Oh shit! Yeah, the bootleg uh, Secret of Mana, Sword of Mana. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two. Wait, there's something else in the bag. Why is there two games in this bag? Oh, God, because there's Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX, and that game's the shit. That's Dude, shit. I actually have one of those for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> or not Matt I'm sorry. Not Matt Hoffman. Was it? No, Dave Mira. I had a Dave Mira game. I'm so sorry. Oh, this one. Crazy Taxi. Oh, dude, that was fun. I remember playing that one on my cousin's uh, I Dreamcast. Right now, that shit was pretty good on the Game Boy, too. Yeah. The Mega Man Battle Network 2. Okay. Advanced Wars 2. Classic NES series Metroid, which my dad bought me out of nowhere one day. Sweet. Classic NES series Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link. That was the Mario-looking Zelda, <laughs> Legend of Zelda game. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like, you scroll, you roll around, then you, like, do some side-scrolling shit, then you go back to wandering. Yeah. yeah. One of my all-time favorites, Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3. I literally bought the Game Boy Advance, a gold version of it, just for this game. Nice. Pokemon Sapphire. Uh, Mega Man Battle Network. Is that the original one? I gotta play these kids. Those are fun. Breath of Fire. There should be a Breath of Fire here, too. Breath of Fire 2, right there. Uh, Tactics Ogre. Okay. Uh... I don't ever remember, like, uh, Ogre Battle or Ogre Tactics. This is the same game, but just for, like, you know. It's a ta I like the Tactics game, I don't know why. Okay. Sonic, t uh, Sonic Advance 2. And the last game that I can find until I find the Game Boy itself, Spyro Season of Ice. Nice. Yo, those Spyro games on this thing were really fun. I, got, I wish I could find the other ones. That was cool. That is cool, <laughs> man. Shit, that's a good little collection. Yeah, my Game Boy games are definitely more than my Super Nintendo games, but I probably sold a few when GameStop was still, you know, Funko Land. Yeah, when they were actually doing decent deals and not giving you, like, 11 bucks for everything. Dude, dude still don't get 11 bucks. So, alright, well... So if you got 11 bucks back then, you got a deal. Yeah, that's true. Eh. Alright, well, uh... It's getting to that point in time where uh, it's really fucking late for you, and it's kind of late for me. So, <laughs> but uh, oh, I can't put them in. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna call it a night here on uh, Girl Blood, and uh, you can uh, find us on Instagram, Girl Blood Radio. You can find Scott over on Instagram as well, Scott NDX. Um, yeah, Harry the Boobs is on there too. Brian the Claw. You can look for them. Um, Brian, I don't, There's a lot of things going on. Yeah, plus uh, we might uh, we might be going back and doing some uh, other shows with uh, the P-Dub guys again once in a while, so stay tuned for that. We'll let you all know when that officially starts to happen. Mm -hmm. um, Scott uh, is doing his little comic book thing, where so hopefully uh, page six will come soon enough and <laughs> skip to and get to get you back to before page seven. You read page seven. Uh, I gotta read them all, so I will go and read them. I promise I will read them. 
Uh, so, but uh, yeah, man, it was fun, man. This is a this is a good one. This is a, I mean, wrestling and, and nostalgia, dude. I love I love talking freaking video games and stuff. That's a bit all basically. I haven't been watching much TV lately, other than like football on Sundays. I've been watching like YouTube. You well, other than wrestling, I mean, I've been watching like YouTube nostalgia type videos and gameplay, uh, people like streaming and stuff like that of their playing old games or newer games or stuff like that. But it's it's yeah, I, I mean, I like I like watching that stuff. I like talking about it too because yeah, it does. It brings back good good memories. So, but uh, on that note, um, so uh, we will see you next time, next time around here uh, for Scott NDX out in New York City. I am Dana Korea here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, and we will catch you next time on Gorilla Blood. Catch. Unless the world ends in twelve hours. Yeah, that's that's quite possible. I mean, again, by the time this gets up online, it'll already be into it. So if it doesn't go online, we're probably dead. <laughs> Yay! So, all right, night, everybody. We'll see you all next time. See ya. Bye. All right.